decades, bragging rights have been decided on college football battlefields. All rivalries, be them bitter or heated, share a common thread of tradition. And one of the most fierce intrastate rivalries in America is the battle between Colorado State and Colorado. Today, we kick off an exciting season of college football as the fight for year-long bragging rights begins and ends at the goal line in Boulder. It's showtime. The annual slugfest called the Rocky Mountain Showdown is up next on FSN. has been falling the last couple of hours in Boulder, but it won't dampen the spirits surrounding the matchup, as for the first time since 97, the battle is back on campus. And from the campus of the University of Colorado in Boulder, it's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week, as today the Colorado State Rams of the Mountain West Conference take on the Colorado Buffaloes. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, alongside Dave Lappin, and welcome to the campus of the University of Colorado. It has been I think it's safe to say, Dave, the longest offseason in the history of the University of Colorado. I agree with you, Joel. A lot of controversy. In the midst of that controversy, the practice field was a sanctuary for the players, somewhere they could go focus. Can you imagine what game time will be like for these guys? You know, adversity galvanizes teams. Let's see if the Buffaloes were galvanized. There was absolutely no balance last year for the Colorado Buffaloes. Joel Klatt is back. He threw for better than 2,600 yards last season. Well, he's the strong suit. Will they have a running game, though? Yeah, that is a big question. But Klatt, he is the unquestioned leader of this football team they gravitate toward him offensive and defensive players he knows everybody's plays and they have tremendous confidence in him Bobby Purify is going to have to lead them out of the woods in terms of a poor running game last season he's gained some weight 25 pounds bigger to take on the rigors of the Big 12 he's a slasher and you'll see him lined up in the slot some matching up against linebackers throwing the football Joel Klatt will be looking at him Bradley Van Pelt is gone. The quarterback for Colorado State the last four years is now a member of the Denver Broncos, but they don't think there's going to be any drop-off moving over to Justin Holland. Well, Justin Holland has all the physical tools. This kid can throw the ball 80 yards in the air. So, obviously, Colorado State is going to attack the deep quadrants of the football field. What Holland has to do, though, is not force it. But his main target, David Anderson, his physical skills are fine. What separates him is the intangibles. He's got the toughness, the discipline, the confidence. Every contested catch he thinks is going to be his. You see his ability to make people miss and finish plays. David Anderson was a record setter. Almost every category, single season record setter last season. Let's see if he can follow up with another one. A big, big factor against Colorado today. Will David Anderson stretch that field? Great combination going for Colorado State, and they also have depth in the backfield. But if you're Marcus Houston, you started your career here in Boulder. You're now a member of the Rams of Colorado State. There is definitely a bullseye on his back. Kickoff minutes away on FSN. When we come back, we'll join Mike Goldberg, Kellen Wynn. Alongside the Hall of Famers, Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith, I'm Mike Goldberg. Kellen, what does Gary Barnett do for his team to help them aid their focus with everything finally behind them somewhat? Well, what he's doing is he's telling them, hey, this is us. This is not about anybody else. This is us. This is what we're going to do. Put everything behind us. This is a wonderful day to be playing Colorado State. And Sonny Lubick is breaking in a brand new quarterback, Justin Holland, taking the place of the cult figure and uh, folk hero, uh, Bradley <laughs> Van Pelt. And he's doing it against the 114th ranked secondary from last year, the Colorado Colorado Buffaloes, not a bad situation. Sonic, America's Drive and Halftime Report. We will see you then with scores and highlights. Right now, it is time for the Big 12 Dr. Pepper Game of the Week. Colorado State at Colorado. The opening kickoff is coming up next. Enjoy the first half, everybody. makes his appearance and I guess it's safe to say on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week we are ready to go. The Rams are in town and just a moment ago Jim Knox got together with Gary Barnett. Gary after an offseason of controversy how anxious are you to kick off this 2004 football season? You know I'm taking every minute in and uh, I don't want to waste a minute I'm going to appreciate every minute that we're out here and if it takes another 20 minutes to kick it off, I'm going to enjoy it. Any concerns your club might be too pumped up for this one? Oh, sure, but nothing I can do about it now. We're just going to go play. 
Best of luck, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Noxy. Sold out affair in one of the most anticipated openers in Colorado Buffalo history. After what has transpired over the last six months, the suspension, of course, well documented of Gary Barnett for close to four months and then reinstated. How is his team going to respond? He said energy, focus, and real support for each member of the team from other teammates. That has been well, the characteristic during the last two, three weeks of camp. No doubt about it, Joel. And, and I think that's a big factor for Colorado State. Can they match the intensity, the emotion, the enthusiasm that uh, Colorado will have tonight? And the other side of it, if Colorado is too pumped up, it's a lot easier for a coach to rein his players in than light a firecracker under them to get them excited to play. I would much rather have my team in a frenzy be able to rein them in just a little bit if necessary. Marcus Houston over to the near side, bringing back the kick along with Chauncey Duckett, the reserve wide receiver over to the far side. Kevin Mark will kick it away. The junior from Coral Springs, Florida. Hal Dowden leads this crew of officials, a veteran referee, and we are ready to go in Boulder. In and out of the end zone. Well, Colorado State, one of their defense, surprisingly, on the field first, Dave, and they have only three starters back defensively. As Colorado State won the toss, but deferred to the second half. So the Buffaloes will have it to start the season at their own 20-yard line. Yamaha starting 11. Offensively, it is Joel Klatt back at quarterback, and he's got to have a world of confidence after what developed last season. And also, Dave, it's his first year under scholarship. A lot of people forget he's a former walk-on. That's right. You know, he's transformed himself from the middle infielder to a college football player. He's about 20 pounds stronger. And I, th I think he's going to have a big year. Garify in the starting backfield. They want to pound the football this year. But can't Garify get out of the backfield? No. Loses a yard coming off the corner. Brandon Cathy, one of the first ones there. Also, Courtney Jones, the middle linebacker. Bad offensively in our Yamaha starting lineup. Bobby Purify, we just saw him run the football behind Sam Wilder. Maybe their best offensive lineman. Clint O'Neill, the other tackle. Burrow and Daniels, the guard. And Fenton, experience at center. Purify with fullback Paul Creighton. Blavenstein, an exceptional tight end. One of the best in the Big 12. Montez, their only experience at wide receiver. Along with Evan Judge, the other flanker. On the play fake. Available is Montez, but a very short game. Maybe three at the most past the 22. Defensively, a very young group for Sonny Lubeck's squad of Colorado State Rams. 4-3 alignment, good pass through their best up front. Nadine gets the start due to the injury to Terrence Carter. Simon and Blake, the underneath tackles. The linebackers, Hall, Jones, who was in on that first stop, along with Luke Atkins. Secondary, Herbert, transferred from Oregon State, along with Brandon Cathy in the safeties. Lance Cicero and Ben Stratton, a very good one, a junior. Honorable mention all conference in the Mountain West last year out of Cheyenne, Wyoming. Now, first third down. Blitz coming up the middle, and it's available over the middle. First down as Judge gets it across the 40 to the 42. A bullet of 19 yards. And it wasn't a favorable third down. It was third and long, but here come the Judge. And he was, uh, he ran a nice route, little slant, and Klatt hit him. Klatt's whole game is timing and ball placement. Big cushion. This was the play before when Joel Klatt took the ball to a little play fake and threw the ball to Monte to the sideline. But Judge did a nice job hitting the seam for that big third down conversion. After another play fake, he comes from the blind side, and that forces the incompletion. Going to the outside, trying to get Dusty Sprague the football. Also, Little Hell's actually over on that side. The sophomore from right here in Boulder played his high school ball at Boulder High. But backside pressure. No question, Joel. And Colorado State very active at the line of scrimmage. The very first running play, Blake Smith, one of the down linemen, got penetration two yards in the backfield. And Bobby Purify's first rush of the football was for a loss. And they're really coming off the line of scrimmage pretty effect effectively. Colorado State has got a lot of hustle in it. Similar situation, second and long, like we saw the last time. Movement up front, three down, and there goes Purify into the secondary for a first down. It was offside, Colorado State. And it's going to hold up inside the 38. Huge hole for Purify over the left side. Boy, the Red Sea parted there. In Colorado State, you have to listen. Don't listen to the quarterback. Watch the football. When the football moves, 
Go ahead and move. Don't be listening to that quarterback. Officials talking about it. Was he drawn offside or did he just jump? And he was, he jumped. You talked about it, Dave. Purify playing at 190 pounds over his first three years. Bigger, quicker, stronger, 25 pounds, and he says he's faster now. Purify is a man. I mean, he's put together. And I think that extra 20, 25 pounds will hold him in good stead at the tail end of the Big 12 season, all that pounding. A gain of 20 on the carry inside the 38. Purify again. And shut down that time after a gain of only a yard. At our Napa Auto Parts, keys to the game going in for Colorado. Well, they don't want to make any mistakes in the kicking game, Joel. They missed six extra points last year, had four punts blocked, two of them went back for touchdowns. They want to dominate the line of scrimmage with the offensive and defensive lines. Both sides of the ball, run the ball and stop the run, eliminate big plays. They had 20 plays of 40 yards or more against them defensively. That was just, I mean, an Achilles heel that Causing problems all season long, can't happen anymore. Wide side of the field, trips, although Monte is the motion man. On second and nine, go! underneath they go, and the first grab for the tight end, Kloppenstein. He caught 20 last year, 4-1 for scores. Honorable mention, all Big 12. He could play on Sunday, Dave. Yeah, definitely, and, and this kid is a good, big, big kid that can block and catch the football, presents himself, obviously, as a huge target. Runs a nice little option choice type route, settles into a little seam of his own. I, yeah, if the tight ends that the Colorado Buffaloes have, Joel, I, I would I would be like the New England Patriots. I'd go multiple tight ends and, and, and really utilize all those big boys. They heard you. They've got three in there now. Sliding that third one. Whoa. Cut back for Purify into the secondary. What a nifty move. First and goal inside the five. Man, he did a heck of a job on Ben Stratton. Ben Stratton's a heck of a player for Colorado State, Joel. He made Ben Stratton miss in space. You like that zone blocking? He yes. got it back after they slid left. Yeah, Joel, you're right. And, and, and that's where all the damage is done. The backside, that's where the blood is spilled. You know, they washed everybody through the play. If you can either do that, wash them through the play, or get them on the ground and create a lane, Purify will take advantage of it. And did he ever there? Then once he got in space, he made Stratton miss. Purify in the eye behind Creighton. First and goal at the four. Short side Purify. Spin into the one. Well, the running backs coach, Sean Sims, spoke with Purify. And it was actually Vickers who got that toss sweep. Lawrence Vickers, the junior from Houston, on his first carry, so a break for Purify. But the running back coach was talking to Purify, and he said he came back more committed than ever. He challenged Purify and told him, Coming to spring practice, he came in and he was in the best shape he's ever been. That's leadership. You know, that's a guy that his senior year is important to him. And Colorado trying to establish themselves right away on this first drive, mixing the pass and the run very effectively. So Vickers now is going to be the up back for Purify on second and goal from the one. Can he get there? Yes. Touchdown, Colorado. Purify pounded it in there. It's an early rushing touchdown. You know, even though Colorado wants to run the ball, Joel, there's no doubt that they want to establish that running game. You want to be balanced, though. And watch the big boys come off the line of scrimmage. And then Purify is just going to hammer it in there. Following that fullback. Lead block, hammered away. I'll tell you what, the offensive line drove Colorado State two, three yards into the end zone. Excellent takeoff at the line of scrimmage by the big people. 80 yard drive. And it's finished off by an extra point from Mason Crosby. Perfect beginning at home. First time this game has been played on campus since 97. The Buffaloes aren't complaining. Purify in the end zone. Colorado with the early advantage. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Sonic. It's not just good. It's Sonic good. We got a break. And we're talking about rain, and it did rain before kickoff. It rained for a couple of hours off and on, but it stopped at least momentarily. It brought the temperature down because it's been warm all week in Boulder. And what a relief for Gary Barnett. Interesting that 
the Rams wanted to defer and they wanted their defense on the field first. It did not pay off. No, it did. That one uh, backfired a little bit on Sonny. I think he was trying to make a statement, you know, play a little bit of a psychological game with his defense. Look, we believe in you. We trust in you. We know our offense is going to produce. We want to see you guys produce immediately. It didn't happen on that first drive. Colorado's offensive line came off the line of scrimmage after the first play of the game very efficiently and effectively. Crosby kicks it away. Woo. It won't be brought back. Hey. Gary Barnett said he thinks this kid will eventually kick Jeez. anywhere from a 60 to a 70-yard field goal in his career here at Colorado. He's only a sophomore. Man. Yamaha's starting lineup offensively. First look at quarterback Justin Holland. He broke all kinds of records. A junior from Lakewood. And we'll talk a little bit later about his high school matchups yeah. with Joel Klatt. They faced each other a couple of times in league play in Jefferson County League play here in Colorado. That's amazing though, Joel, over 10,500 yards in high school. It's amazing. Houston with the H-back Greason sliding. And the former Buffalo is pulling his way for about three, the senior from oh, Denver. Get out, get out. Offensively, our Yamaha is starting the lineup for Colorado State. Bristol, Oldenburg, Bemper, Day, and Pears, three of the five experienced. The two tackles in the center. Houston, who we just saw with Dreesen, they're all conference age back. The tight end, Bartz, and then Osborne, one flanker, and a record setting. David Anderson, who caught 72 last year, first team All Mountain West. He shattered records, both receptions and receiving yardage at Colorado State last season. Talk about ramming it home. Marcus Houston. Strong move up the middle, but a flag is down to the play as he takes it to the 27. Defensively for Colorado. And they're worried defensively, just like Colorado State. Lagan, Bonafuna, McKesney, Gary up front with Dawn. Then Dyson, who we'll talk about, along with Iwa, the linebacker. Dyson, the first true freshman to start at Colorado, is a inside linebacker. Wheatley and Burrow on the outside. Billingsley and Brooks are the safeties. And Beasley's been a bit banged up. Yes. He just got to practice midweek, but he's got a bruised knee. We'll see if that impacts him. And they picked the flag up, Joel. Referee picked the flag up, waved it, incorrectly thrown. Yeah, Billingsley was a, is, is big in this football game because he'll be matched up a lot on Dreesen, who's an excellent receiver at 260 pounds and has got speed. Collins looking at a third and three and That's didn't like out. it when he got up to the line. In fact, he didn't have a choice. Play clock was all the way down. Used too much uh, time trying to decide the play to call. By the time they broke the huddle, came to the line of scrimmage, had to burn it. We just took a look at Sonny Lubeck on the sideline in his 13th season. He has really transformed Colorado State into one of the better programs in the nation. Be right back to Boulder. Classic football weather on this opening weekend in Boulder. As now a huge third down early for Colorado State. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knox at Folsom Field. 80 years of football as it opened back in 1924. Two tight ends, wide side of the field. They need three. Quick on the out. Will they get it? Very close. Depends upon the spot. I got to believe he's going to be in too short and taking it in on that side. As John Walker, the redshirt freshman from Lancaster, California. It looks like it's going to be fourth and a couple of inches. Yes. And Sonny Luba can't roll the dice right now. So Colorado goes to the length of the field to score, and Colorado State goes one, two, three, and out. So that question we had about the matching the early emotion and intensity. Would Colorado State do it? So far, it's all Colorado in those intangible categories. Stephon Robinson is going back for the Buffaloes. Waiting for the punt from Jimmy Kaler, the redshirt freshman. Wow. Robinson, also a freshman, out of Denver. Into the wind to Wobbler, and a returnable one, but Robinson puts it on the ground. Still good field position across the 35. And put out of bounds. So Colorado gets it back. Miles Kochevar on the special teams hit. So a great start for Joel Klatt. 
looking ahead and also talk to us about the turmoil in the off season. Obviously, it's been hard. You know, it hasn't been a normal off season. It's felt like two, three years, but uh, we're excited to get back on the football field. We're very, uh, we're very excited to kind of prove and show what, what we've been able to do and grow from what's happened this off season. I don't think anybody questions what they've got offensively, Dave. They've got talent and they've got depth. What about defensively, though? Out of the edge, Kirofa. Got a little chip from his man downfield. The lineman going out on the play for Colorado, but not much else as he takes it for about five up to the 42. And that's an area that Colorado feels they can attack Colorado State's defense in the flat and on the perimeter, in the passing game a little bit. You know, the coaches described Joel Platt, and particularly Sean uh, Watson, the offensive coordinator, as an unsinkable ship during the turmoil and controversy. Joel Klatt's leadership stepped up even more. He has started the game with that completion, 4-5 for 36 yards. Slides Mike Dern in motion, Purify making a miss. Now they busted the tackle right at the original line of scrimmage. Gets the first down. Brought down by Jonathan Simon and Jamal Hall. To purify running with good vision. He's got it across the midfield stripe once again. And Joel, the uh, Colorado Buffalo offensive line is just rolling off the line of scrimmage, particularly the backside. The backside is the most important side in a lot of cases. And they've done a lot of, taken a lot of time studying what the Denver Broncos do running the football. And backside is paramount in their success. Last year, as you see, Purify's got 55. Last year, Purify had 31 the entire game. Now, a little waggle out on the edge. And a nice block from Purify and a completion for a first down. Taking it in, Blake Mackey, the sophomore from Bakersfield, California. Very highly recruited athlete at the wide receiver position. His hands have been questionable. 50-50, whether he's going to catch it. But boy, he was very secure right there. Nice block. Took a defensive end down to the ground. Purify throws another block. Taking another defender to the ground. Rolling to his left, throwing the ball accurately. Ball placement and timing is what Joel Klatt's game's all about. And there's a great example right there. Timing, ball placement were both, were both outstanding. Started at the Buffaloes 37. They've already got it to the 33 of the Rams. Up by seven. Play fake. Outside it goes again to Monte. His second grab, short yardage. But a good play fake. He's got it all the way down to the 27-yard line. Monte was the only receiver to come back this year with any receptions. They feel like they've got a good group and speed, but no experience at all outside. You're exactly right, Joel. And they've got size, too. A lot of those receivers, 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 200 pounds, 205 pounds. Little naked bootleg there. All the run fake going in left. Joel Klatt coming out to the right. All by his lonesome. Gary Barnett told us there's going to be multiple shifts. He said they chipped every snap, and he's right. Yeah. Different looks every time. Purify diving close to the first down, but shy by about a half a yard. You're, you, Joel, you're, you're exactly right. They've run different personnel groups. They've run different formations with the same personnel groups. I mean, it's almost like where's Waldo? You have to identify where's Purify. You know, what, what are they doing with the tight ends? Who's shifting where? And, and what that does, it just puts that little bit of an element of doubt in the Colorado State defensive football team. You know, do I have my assignment? Do I have the run support figured out? That's a nice edge for the Buffalo. And the Rams get the stop. They're on the ropes early. Purify slides through. He's got the first down. He only needed a yard. He's got it down to the 19, tripped up by Jamal Hall. So what a beginning. If Bobby Purify needed a confidence builder, he's getting at the senior from Colorado Springs because right after the game last year, Dave, he was gone for the rest of the season, basically. Absolutely. And, and it's just a game of keep away right now for the Buffaloes. Colorado State has run three plays. Colorado has run a bunch. Time of possession, number of snaps. I mean, it is totally a game of keep away in favor of the Buffaloes right now. First drive, 10 plays, 80 yards. Another long drive. Purify going back against the green. Good blocking. He waited for the pursuit to slide by, and he gets eight again on first down. Well, the first down line brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. And right now, the big O for Colorado. Yeah. 
And you know who made that block, Joel, that you were talking about purify was patient, cut back behind. Sam Wilder in the right tackle position. He washed his defense then all the way past the center to the left side of the offensive formation. That's sustaining a block and finishing a block big time. Doubled up on the wide side. Same side, Purify gets huge hole up the middle, banging it down to the one. Why are they ever having their way with the front four and make it the front seven of Colorado State? They are. They're sustaining blocks. Colorado State can't get off the blocks. Brian Daniels had an unbelievable block right on this play, finishing down the football. You see Colorado State people on the ground. Joel Klatt carrying out the play fake. They've got to stay healthy. Gary Barnett said they've only got 12 linemen, offensive linemen, on the squad itself. So the first five have to stay healthy. Right. Jolling in the backfield. He'll get it. Can he get to the end zone? Battling, spinning. He may make it. No, they're going to say he's down. Boy, second and third effort, though. He wouldn't quit, would he? Well. Sophomore, San Antonio's Marshall High School. At six, even 235 pounds. They do have some big backs that'll pound the ball in there. And when you're a big physical back, the key is keep those feet moving. And does he do it? Watch, hit, drive, drive the feet, drive the feet, still driving, still driving, still, driving, still trying to finish. That's a heck of a run. That's I don't know if he was down. They're uh, going to say his forward progress was stopped. Exactly. But boy, I'll tell you what, he was smelling that goal line and he wanted that touchdown desperately. And now second and goal looks like another long drive for the Buffaloes. Jolly staying in the eye. Jolly with early penetration won't make it. Uh-oh, got a little, yes. uh, little extra curriculum. Well, going you on. saw the linebacker. Courtney Jones, a little activity at the end of the play for the middle linebacker. Could be half the distance to the goal, which is uh, about a third of a yard. <laughs> Lawrence Vickers played it well, though. He looked like he just got punched by Joe Frazier. There is don't this ball, personal foul. On the defense, first down. Number yep. 52. So it's at a third the goal, first first goal down. inches away. Jim Knox, what's the latest? Bobby Purify now on the Colorado sidelines. He came out a couple plays ago, got poked in the eye. So Bobby Purify right now on the buff sidelines. What about that visor? You see a lot of guys yeah, really. use the visor for that very reason. No question about it. Well, I tell you, that, that's a bad thing. When you get a finger directly in that eyeball, boy, that's a lot of pressure, a lot of pain. Jolly stays in the eye. Three tight ends in the formation. And great penetration from the outside. Luke Atkins, a weak side linebacker, saved the play. And they're going to say he's in anyway. Wow. Touchdown, Colorado. Huh. Or do they give it to him? No. They put their arms up. Jolly looked over. The official in the back of the end zone put his arms up. The yeah, linesman said he was down. And I thought he was down. I thought his knee was definitely down, just like you saw, Joel. I thought he was down. Yeah, he's definitely down yes. short of the goal. Bounced. And that's, that's just a, a great job by, by Adkins. Penetration and, and making a play, a shoestring tackle. Jolly staying in there. But instead, quarterback sneak. Yeah, 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 yeah. No indication yeah. yet. Yeah, we got a touchdown. Got to believe he made it. He yeah. did. Touchdown, Colorado. Boy, the time of possession once again, and the number of snaps, number of plays run. Boy, and the, on the first touchdown that Colorado had, the offensive line blew up Colorado State. This time, Colorado State's pad level is lower. You have to get the pads underneath the offensive lineman if you're playing defense. Colorado still got a decent enough push, though, for Joel Klatt to find a little, nice little uh, pocket in there. Cozy his way into the end zone. Looked like his big tackle, Sam Wilder, was on his back helping. Extra point. Crosby is good. So 63 yards. Another 12 plays, five plus off the clock, and an early 14 point lead for Colorado. Early haymaker for Colorado. Colorado State doesn't know how to hit him. Well, don't forget tomorrow, special edition of College Football Saturday presented by Kia Saris. Fresno State looks to upset a Washington team that's trying to get back among the back 10 elite. All starts tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific, only on FSN. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox back in Boulder. What a beautiful night for football. Oh. Great Perfect. football weather. Perfect. That's out of the end zone easily. Total offense, Colorado 143, Colorado State three snaps. 
nine yards. And they'll get it back at the 20. Time for a Dr. Pepper game break. Mike Goldberg. Joel, first stop, Austin. Number seven, Texas, literally North running Texas. through North Texas. 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 Watch Junior Texas. Selvin Young. This time he'll go 48 yards for his second touchdown of the day, 41-0 at the half. But Nebraska is doing them one better. Joe Daly has thrown, yes, guys, thrown four touchdowns. Hello, West Coast offense, Joel Day. Thanks, Mike. Not a bad start for the Big 12. Oh, some smoking some people out there. <laughs> From the well, they just failed from their own 20. Holland on first down, well short of John Walker. Now Auto Parts, keys to the game. Can they get back in it? Yeah, that's the big question, Joel. Colorado State, they want to take it away, not give it away. Last year in this game, they were minus two. They were minus 14 on the season. Dictate field position. Well, that isn't happening right now. And it's because Colorado's offensive line and defensive line are dominating at the line of scrimmage. And if they do get in the red zone, they want touchdowns, not field goals. Last year's game was decided strictly by touchdowns. You're going to have to score in this affair normally. David Anderson needs some touches. Instead, on second and ten, it's running back Marcus Houston falling forward for a couple, and that is it. So another third down, this time third and eight for Colorado State. They have a pure pocket passer in Justin Holland. They feel like he's a natural leader, so they shouldn't be intimidated by an early 14-point deficit. No, that's right. There shouldn't be game plans flying out of the window of the coaching booth right now. I mean, it's early in this game. They have the offensive abilities to come back and, and score points. But right now, all the momentum is with the Buffaloes, and facing third and longs make it tough. Same formation. Three wide receivers set. Flankers screen. George Hill, he won't get there. Took too long to develop. In fact, he loses a couple. Back to the 20, so three and out with a punt again. In on the hit, Makarika Dawn, the middle linebacker. Joel, the thing that impressed me on this, watch the pursuit. There's going to be 10 black jerseys around this wide receiver screen at the end of this. The excellent rush, and now here comes the, okay, watch everybody hustle inside out. Look at all the black jerseys here. That's amazing. I mean, everybody is flying around the football. Everybody's within two or three yards of the football. 10 of the 11 players were right there. One grenade could have gotten them all. Stefan Robinson waiting for the punt. Here Whoa. comes the pressure, and they almost got to it. Another low wobbler. Gonna get Robinson hit at the 45 and driven back after getting near the 48-49. But you're right, there is a flag down. Right at the point where the punt got away. Yeah, Babcock did a nice job of acting. Uh, I'm not sure there was severe contact, but it's going to be running into the kicker. Colorado. Is it five That's, or it's is five, it it's 15? Five. It's five, so it's not an automatic. Colorado State is still going to have to punt it. It's only a five-yard penalty running into. Roughing is 15. And Gary Barnett likes the activity he just saw. And look at him come off the edge. Right up the middle. Oh, that's oh, that's definitely award-winning right there. That's a award-winning. I, I, that's a, that's an Oscar opportunity right there, because guys on barely touched him, and and you would have thought that uh, running that into the kicker got, got hit right in the middle. On the defense, be a five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. But it is running into and not roughing. Watch this award-winning performance by Babcock. Dies on, basically just runs by him. And, and man, that's a nice spin move. <laughs> so he clipped him a little bit up high around the pad. Yeah, barely. Right. But the point <laughs> is, he made right. it look like. Oh, you're right. Exactly. I mean, it, 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 like he got hit by, he helicoptered out of there, didn't he? <laughs> He's a senior from Tampa. Honorable mention all. Mountain West last year. That's an all-conference uh, Emmy Award-winning performance of acting that contact. But in the back of his mind, twice they've come close. See, there's better protection. Now they set up for the return, and he gets into one. Wow, nice. Robinson over the shoulder, backing around his own 20. No block of the back flag. Yeah, they got Finally, it. they got it late. Yep. Robinson didn't want to go down, but it's coming back anyway. We saw it over on our sideline, Dave. That was Dizon. Dizon got back-to-back -back penalties. Dizon was the one that had the contact from the punter, and he had the illegal block in the back. So the true freshman has to shake himself a little bit. Back-to-back infractions and you know the thing is with respect to Babcock 
faking the contact, that's exactly what he's supposed to do. I mean, he, he had a great play on, on that running into the punter. That was interesting from Hal Dowden. Going against, he said, Colorado State. Final minute of a perfect first 15 if you're a Colorado Buffalo fan. So there's no illegal block in the back there? The options belonging. We saw the procedure signal from Dowden. Options belonging to Gary Barnett. Wow. He'll probably take it to the 38. A kicking team member Ran out of went bounds. out of bounds, right. came back in, participated. That penalty is declined. First down. You can't, you can't run out of bounds and come back in and be in the fray. Watch, the, watch this action right here. He'll end up out of bounds. There he is, out of bounds on the sideline, and he's running out of his own free will, and he comes back into the field to play, and that's what the official called. I thought this was the penalty. Ooh, you can quite see it. The Dizon was very close uh, to hitting him in the back. So a 10-play, 80-yard drive to start the game. 12-play, 63-yarder on their second series. And now they're going to be 62. They've got it to the 38. Bouncing out, Jolly trying to turn the corner. Won't get there, though. Great pursuit down the line. And once again, Luke Atkins, the weak side backer, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, and a former walk-on. We'll catch more college football on Fox College Sports. To see if you get Fox College Sports, contact your local cable provider. You can call 1-877-2-GET-FCS or log on to foxcollegesports.com. That sounds a little bit easier. <laughs> Well, you know, Colorado's got a sugar huddle going. Their huddle is no more than three yards from the line of scrimmage. Sam Weish involved here? Yeah, no, that's exactly Your right. old coach? No huddle and the sugar huddle and all that good stuff. Final seconds of the first. Out in the flat. Vickers available, and he's got the first down. Lawrence Vickers, the junior from Houston. He's got 13 yards. Good job by Joel Platt because... Patrick Goodpaster, the all-conference defensive lineman, was right in his face on the naked bootleg. They ran a blitz and watched Goodpaster on the on the basically the contain right in in his face. But Clatt knows that he's got Vickers, and he calmly gets the ball right over the pressure and advances the chains. Nice job by Joel Clatt, showing poise and patience both. Colorado doing anything they want right now. Up by 14 on what should be the final snap. As Jolly takes it for good yardage on first down, four almost five, and only six snaps for Colorado State wow. as the ball was owned by Colorado the entire 15 minutes. Good old fashioned keep away. That's the end of the first quarter. Dominating performance by Colorado after an offseason of controversy. It has an impact on them so far. They're up by 14. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week on FSN. Along the base of the Rockies, we welcome you back once again to Boulder. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, September 12th. America's number one free game show is back, and in week one, took a close look at Joe Gibbs' return to the NFL with the Redskins. Plus, one of the NFL's biggest names goes 10 yards with Terry Bradshaw. Fox's NFL Sunday returning September 12th at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox. With Sean Watson, offensive coordinator. For the Colorado Buffaloes, a couple of concerns going in. Winning the line of scrimmage, they've done that, and also wanted to be better at their play action than they were last year. And he got good faster on that final snap, second to last snap of the quarter. Yeah, he did. That naked bootleg has been uh, very, very fruitful. They've, they've run it three or four times out of different formations, different looks. It's been successful every single time. Second and six. First snap of the second quarter for the Buffaloes in Rams territory. There's the play fake again. Added oh, no. by some time. Floating one perfectly. First down. Taking it in. The tight end, Jesse Wallace, the senior from Kansas City. Boy. They go deep at that position behind Zipniewski and Klopfenstein. Wallace is the third. Yeah, third tight end. Little play action pass. Get Colorado State in the blitz. Get the blitzers on the ground. Get separation. We go Wallace can run. Great Separate. touch, too, wasn't it? Touch, timing, and ball placement. Touch, timing, accuracy. Excellent throw by Platt. You couldn't have done it any better if you walked down there and handed it to him. They take it to the 24 after the gain of 20 on second and six. A nightmare beginning for Colorado State. Counteraction. Jolly barely tripped up because there was a big hole. If he doesn't lose his balance, getting the snap. 
Falling down to the arms of Ben Stratt. First quarter numbers, all Jeez. Colorado. Incredible. Incredible. I'm surprised they had 405. It took that long for those six snaps. That's just, you talk about domination, and it starts up front. It starts at the line of scrimmage. Colorado has owned it. Colorado's offensive line and defensive line both have taken it to Colorado State. There's no question about it. And as a result, those are the numbers you get. Jolly once again the single as they double up the tight ends. Jolly waiting for the block into the foul. What a great run. All the way down with a flag on the play inside of the five. Man. Boy, he picked his way, didn't he? He sure did. Showed patience and, and discipline in, in getting that done. Monte may have held on the edge. I think they may have a wide receiver holding on the on the perimeter. It is going to come back, but boy. Getting Colorado State on the ground. Holding offense, number 45, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. We got the big fullback, big got the big fullback and not the not the wide receiver. But boy, they knock knocking people on the ground. I mean they're cutting Colorado State's defense in half, and then the running backs are going to doing a great job of making the first guy miss. If you're a quality running back in college football, the first guy that presents himself should never be able to take you down one on one. And this is a Colorado team that averaged 93 and a half yards on the ground last year, 113 out of 117 Division I 18s. Worse since 1984, single season rushing. So now second and long for the point of the infraction after a play fake. Here comes the Heat. Ooh, out was available, but just out of the reach of the wide receiver, Dusty Sprague, a Richard freshman from Holyoke, Colorado. Got an offensive lineman, Sam Wilder, for, for Colorado that is a converted defensive lineman. Look at the kick step, set, now use your hands. Jam, good, extend, extend, on good pass, nice job. That's it was the heat pass to the center, though. Yeah, exactly. What he did, Wilder's job is to keep the pocket wide. He did that. The center and guards have to keep the depth of the pocket. The, the pocket collapsed in Platt's face. Platt should be able to step up. Wilder did his job. He would have run good pass to well past that play, but the inside collapsed from the quarterback. First time out of the gun, and it was almost wide right. Now the sidearm toss, and is it a pick? Yes! What an interception! Miles Kochevar showing super hands to get that low and away fastball. Man. That's what the Rams need. Exactly. That was one of the keys for them. Take it away, don't give it away. They haven't given it away. They haven't gotten untracked offensively. But they have not turned the football over. And the defense comes up with the first takeaway of the game. Joel Klatt drops down, goes sidearm. That's just great route recognition and breaking on the football. I mean, he turned into the primary receiver. Read Joel Klatt's eyes all the way. Knew what the route was. Broke on it. Route recognition. That's a great catch, too. I mean, full extension to catch the football. Take the snap right from the sideline. So personal wise, no change for Colorado. Tristan Walker, the tailback. Man, play action fake works well. Middle of the field available, wide open. It's complete for the first down. John Walker breaking tackles to the 43. Play fake really froze him. Really did, and, and the person who missed the tackle was Tyrone Henderson. That means that J.J. Billingsley's knee is bothering him a little bit. Although I think I see Billingsley out there. But the play action, look at the play action right here. All the run action to the left. Out comes the quarterback with, to the right with a little bit of a protection. Now, the middle of the football field. Look at that cavity. Boom. And it was almost late. Yeah, that, that shows the arm strength he has. He rifled it in there pretty well. Walker bobbling it momentarily. The sophomore from Claremont, California. And that took the play right out of rhythm after the first handoff that he received. So a gain of a half yard at the most. It'll bring up second and long. They'd like to see this big boy stay healthy. Walker, he's had major knee reconstruction, but old 33 in that white jersey can stay healthy. He can thump some people. They, they say that he could be the next sap. Susa Sap is a great running back for Colorado State. And they, they think Walker has that type of ability. His offensive coordinator told us he had the best camp of all the running backs. Houston's back in there, though, with Trees in the H back. Can Houston get a block outside? No. Well, they're sticking with the game plan. There's no doubt about that. Trying to get Houston involved. He had 104 yards on 15 carries in last year's game against his old teammates. 
He has not been able to get off so far, though. What you have to do, Joel, you're exactly right. Stay with your game plan. Don't fire and fall back every snap. You have to stay balanced. I mean, that's the key to success. That's what Colorado's done in, in accumulating that 14-point lead. They've run the ball and thrown the ball equally effectively. And, and Colorado State cannot become one-dimensional with 12 minutes to play in the second quarter. They still have to be able to try to run the ball. And Dreesen and Dave Anderson need some touches, Dave. No doubt. Third and seven. Here comes the heat. Holland feels it. And tough toss. Trying to go outside to his running back, Walker. He was blanketed, though. He sure was. Excellent coverage. That's Dyson. A true freshman inside linebacker from Hawaii who was a great running back in high school. So there was some speculation maybe he'd do that for the Buffaloes. But as soon as they put him on the defensive side, they said that was it. Brian Cabral recruited him from Hawaii and in, not in the assistant head coach of Colorado, Colorado Buffaloes. And guys on started out as a safety, so he does have coverage skills. They said we got to get him close to the line of scrimmage and make plays. Robinson waits for the punt, and it is a beauty with good hang time. Didn't call for the fair catch. Battles to the 15. Guts yeah. for a redshirt freshman. The halo rule is gone. No more halo rule. That is guts. Colorado gets the stop and gets the ball back. Dominating start for Joel Klatt in Colorado yesterday. Best hand sports show period. On the road right here in Boulder. Jeremy Bloom join the guys. And I'll tell you, I'm going to miss every Saturday going to return a punt and all these guys going, Bloom. I miss Jeremy as well. Gary Barnett also making an appearance. Are you happy that we finally get to play a football game and move on from the other <laughs> stuff? Are you excited about the game tomorrow? What do you think? I know it. Yeah. I know it. We all are. I know it. It's been a good weekend for all of us in Boulder. <laughs> yeah, really. Tom Arnold, Chris Rose, and the guys here. From the 15, first down. And they like Jolly. He's barely tripped up. Good blocking over to the left side for five on first down. Jamal Hall barely got him around the ankles. Down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Here he is, Jeremy Bloom. Now, Jeremy, you should be catching kicks. You also should be maybe catching passes. But right now, you're on the sidelines watching because the NCAA ruled you ineligible due to taking training money because you're getting ready for the Olympics. How disappointed are you? I'm very disappointed. I feel like I should be out there, and it's hard. But, you know, as the game uh, wears on, I feel like I need to find closure in that and close the book on that and look forward to, to more things in my future athletically. Yeah, you were actually training in Chile, and you came back here, flew back here because you wanted closure, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I found out in Chile that I wasn't going to be able to, to play college football, so I knew that I had to fly back, go to this game, be with my teammates, say goodbye, and then move on. All right, you are training for the 2006 Winter Olympic Games. What about aspirations of playing NFL? Well, I'd like to play down the road in Nevesco Field for the Broncos, so we'll see after the Olympics in 06. Maybe I'll enter the draft and uh, try my sh try out the NFL. All right, Jeremy, best of luck in the 2006 Winter Games. I got to hold him back here, guys. He wants <laughs> on the field. I got to hold him back. <laughs> uh, he's quick. I'll tell you what, that guy's got some serious quicks. Joel Klatt was doing his Jeremy Bloom impersonation there, making some people miss. Not exactly a strong suit, but it worked that time, didn't it? Yeah. Helmet flies. Ball comes loose as well from Johnny. And he holds on to it, they say. Well, Jeremy Bloom, they like him as a receiver, and they but they really loved him as a punt returner. There's no doubt he was a return guy for them. But you saw the great concentration, body control right there, and this is where he excelled. This is against Kansas State, finds a seam and takes it to the house. Acceleration, speed, quickness, vision. You know, when you're a mogul skier like he is, you have to anticipate your next move before you even make it. And that's an innate ability that this kid has. I think he does have a future maybe as a return guy in the NFL. So in 24 career games, it wasn't the catches. Right. It was the 14-yard average on punt returns. Absolutely. Field position was exceptional when he was out there. Second and five, Jolly did hang on to the football. And another play pick, trying to buy some time, and just throwing the ball away is clack. There has been more heat on Joel Clapp in the last two series. Colorado State's made a nice adjustment to the naked bootleg. The last couple of times Joel Clapp has come out in that naked bootleg where the run action goes one way and he comes out unprotected the other way, a Colorado State defender has been right in his face and, and given him little opportunity to react and get rid of the ball in a timely fashion. Junior from Arvada, Colorado. 
He threw for better than 2,600 yards last year. He's missed his last three, including an interception after he started out eight for nine. And he completed over 65% of his passes last season. That's almost two out of every three right there. Third and five from the 38. Go! Oh. Contact early. Oh. Incomplete as he went for his wideout, Evan Judge. Well, he said he timed it perfectly. Jamal Hall almost got the tip. Came off a of judge and Hall almost came up with it. Robert Herbert, an exceptional defensive back. He started at Oregon State, transferred from Compton City College. Here come the judge trying to get that inside release, a little arm over swim deal. Excellent coverage. Oh, man. Hall almost got there. He knew he had an opportunity. And Colorado State hustles for those loose balls, tip balls. That's a big deal for them in practice. Uh, they even run around and pick up incompletions and return them to get in the habit of doing so. If the ball's fumbled on the ground, you got to get there, pick it up, and run with it. John Torp with his first punt of the game, the junior from Louisville, Colorado. The Buffaloes score twice, Play then have the turnover, and it is going to be a mark off of five. Good ball, delay a game, on it, kicking team, five yard penalty, still fourth down. You know, I was going to say, if for a first game, there hasn't been that many penalties. It's been fairly well played in that area. And, and really, the tackling has been spotty. You know, we, we've been talking about that a lot of people making that first guy miss. Well, as the season wears on, I think there'll be better contact in those first contact opportunities. Tackling is usually a little sloppy early on. High spiral. Anderson oh. doesn't call for the fair catch. He swallowed up in a hurry by Dusty Spray. Good coverage downfield by the wide receiver. Another flag. And there is a flag. It's down at the point of the tackle, right around the 21-22. Remember, no halo rule anymore. You right. don't have to give that two-yard area. You can you can make contact as soon as the ball's caught. You can hang right on his hip. Yep, absolutely. You and just that's have, what Sprague did. You can't interfere with his opportunity to catch it, but as soon as he catches it, touches it, secures it, you can you can detonate. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. It'll be a 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Field position a problem for Colorado State this drive. So bad to worse. They have not started a drive outside of their own 20. They get it for the fourth time when we come back. Trailing by 14. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on FSN. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Wingstop, the wing experts, and by Cooper Tires, proud sponsor of college football. Classic night along the Rockies, Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, back in Boulder. Great night for football. Probably in the low 60s, high 50s, right around kick. We had some little, little bit of rain. We're talking about more later tonight, but it has been perfect ever since kickoff. Tristan Walker in the backfield once again. They've got to get Anderson and Reeson some touches. We've talked about that. It's Walker, not much available, slamming it ahead for a couple, only to the 12-yard line. Well, today's poll question from FoxSports.com on MSN. Is instant replay good for football overall? College football in particular. Cast your vote on FoxSports.com on MSN. We'll give the results later in the game. Well, and we're going to ask Knox on Fox later in the game, too, aren't we? Right, and the Big Ten is utilizing instant replay this season. We saw it today in the Wisconsin game. Barry Alvarez loved it. From the 12. Yeah. On the counter action, Walker runs into Whoa. his own blocker. Well, that's tough when you run into your center, Jason Retta. Put a, put a good hit on him, too. You said it. Fell forward for a couple, so now it's going to be third and short. Close to the 18-yard line. That's the kind of start it's been, though, for Colorado State. Stumbling. They've only got one first down. That came on the last series. On a pass play to John Walker. Here's Anderson right here. Has not even had an opportunity to catch the football. Let's see how the coverage, if there's a safety over the top, helping the cornerback underneath him. And there isn't right now. Good coverage, they closed on the wide receiver. Dustin Osborne making the play. Jared Burrell, a sophomore cornerback, a transfer from Garden City Community College. 
Colorado State wanted to test him a little bit. They wanted to test Burl and see if he could, could hold up to it. And he did on this snap. His timing and the arrival of the football simultaneous in the official's opinion. He definitely disrupted the play. And another punt coming up for Jeff Babcock, the senior from Tampa. And oh. more pressures. They almost got to that one. I think that may have split the uprights. Robinson grabbed as soon as he took it in. And he's got it at about the 46. So again, Colorado with sensational field position. And Colorado stayed lucky that punt wasn't blocked. Yeah, and they haven't blocked it, but they're in Babcock's head. I mean, as you said, Joel, every time he drops the ball from hand to foot, he's thinking that there's somebody in the vicinity. Wheatley, the defensive back, almost had it. Oh, yeah, he did. He, he laid out perfectly. He, his, his target was right. You don't aim for the foot of the punter. You aim in front of that where you think it will leave his foot. And he almost picked it right off his foot just a shade late. So leading 14 to nothing, just about halfway through the second quarter, Bobby Purify is back into the game for the first time in the last three series. Shifting nicely, barely pulled down from behind. Close to a first down, he got eight on first down, and that has been the story of this game. On first down, the Buffaloes have averaged five or better. They have, and it's just nothing fancy. Inside zone blocking. Down lineman for Colorado, double team a defensive lineman. One rubs off to that linebacker level, and Bobby Purify can pick his spot. And he danced for a long eight right there, and he had 80 yards rushing on 10 carries in the first quarter alone. That's getting him off. And Colorado State coaches were worried about that. They said, no, if Bobby Purify starts fast, he gains momentum, and we'll have a Tiger by the tail. 45 of Colorado State just need two, and finally some penetration in the backfield. Adam Lancicero, the free safety, a senior from Orange, California, busted up the play. So no gain on the carry. It'll be third and a couple in our first down line. Brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. Third and short right here on the on the positive side of the field for the Colorado offense. Big play for both football teams. And especially for Colorado with this kind of field position. They're already up by 14. They can do some serious damage before they get to halftime. A little counter action. Underneath, it's available to the tight end. And a first down. Wallace, his second grab of the game, the senior from Kansas City. Great deception overall by Joel Flack. And, and well-conceived, well-designed play by Sean Watson and the offensive coaches. Wallace comes in motion behind the line, behind the offensive line. And, and Wall, here comes Wallace. Uncovered. And, and, and he's, he's hiding behind the offensive lineman. And they don't have man coverage because there's nobody with them. They're playing zone underneath. And, and nice block, peel back block. And Wallace has himself an easy first down. Well-conceived, well-executed. Uh, first down at the 36 of Colorado State. Purify, now being available inside. Why not go outside? He's got another first down. And hit from behind by the linebacker, Jamal Hall. Bobby Purify showing the speed and the ability to bounce it. That's vision, that's patience, and that's acceleration. 18 on that carry. He could have close to 100 by halftime. And what it is, is watch these offensive linemen come off the ball. Look at that. That's that's great stuff right there. There's the seal block. Another seal block here at the top of the screen. Purify bounces it. Now it's speed. And he dips to the outside. He outruns people. Wide receivers downfield trying to throw blocks. That's good stuff. I mean, everybody's involved. Play busted up in the backfield. Purify finally stopped. No gain on the carry. He's already got the century mark I mentioned. By halftime, well, how about 106 so far? 14 carries. He's not the only one lugging the pig. I mean, you know, there's other guys from Colorado contributing to this running attack. And don't forget, Dave, two years ago, purifying Chris Brown gave Colorado a super combination. Oh, that was a heck of a one-two punch. That was a right cross left hook right there. He was honorable mention all Big 12 two years ago. Last year, ankle injury, barely played. Two years ago, 739 yards with a five and a half yard average. Pressure comes. Flat in trouble of the reach of his tight end, Kloppenstein. Yeah, the pressure, uh, Nading got the hit on, on Joel Klatt. Right there, he did a good job of, of getting rid of the football and living for another day. You don't take a sack in the red zone. 
They're in the red zone right now, the scoring zone. You don't throw an interception. You do not take a sack and cause your team problems in those areas. Now it's third and 10 instead of turning the ball over or making it about third and 17 or third and 18. So that's as good a play as some of the completions he's made. Get rid of it and reload. From the 18, it's going to be third and 10 for the Buffaloes. Dante the motion man. Purify on the delay. He does it. He's going to have to do it on his own. And he won't make it. Bounced out of bounds by the defensive back, Robert Herbert. So a field goal try coming up as he gets it to the 14. I really like Robert Herbert. He's built like a safety and can cover like a corner. They got themselves a, a fine player. Junior college transfer. He was initially accepted to Oregon State. There for a year, had some academic difficulty, but this kid can play football. He's got long arms, can lock people up in that bump and run. Here he is on the edge. He'll be pressuring this field goal off the edge. It's going to be a 31-yard drive for Mason Crosby. Man, he's got it. So they've had it five times, and Colorado has scored on three of those five possessions. Crosby's first field goal of the year with the Buffaloes up by 17. Coming up on the Sonic, America's Drive-In Halftime Report, I'll be joined by the Hall of Famers, Kellen Winslow and Billy Ray Smith. Scores and highlights around the Big 12, plus LSU having troubles with Oregon State in the Bayou. It's the Sonic, America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Back to Boulder, Joel, Dave, beautiful night, huh, guys? It is a classic night for football. As you can see in the background, looks like a postcard. What would those be, cumulus, cirrus? Uh, what type of clouds would those be? But that is unrealism right there. It's almost surreal, isn't it? Yeah, Rice back deep along with Anderson. They can only watch it. So the Rams again, first and ten. Fifth time they've had it. Fourth time at their own 20-yard line. It's been that bad. Our U.S. Navy trivia tonight. 1994, ten years ago, Rashawn Salam got up in 2,000 yards on his way to winning the Heisman. Failed to rush over 100 yards only once that year. Who held him to under 100? <laughs> we'll come back with that answer a little bit later. Yes, sir. Rashad Salam. Only Heisman winner yep. they have had in Buffalo history. And they get the ground game going. Down by 17. Play fake out on the edge. Finally, Dreesen gets a touch. Dreesen makes the most of it. Gets nine yards on first down. And that's a major explosion for Colorado State with the way things have been going. Yeah, no doubt about that. Dreesen has made himself one heck of a football player. Former high school wide receiver is now 260 pounds with an ability to run like you just saw. He's going to give himself an opportunity in somebody's training camp because you don't find guys with that kind of size speed ratio. Oh my goodness, almost two football field. It is a two football field advantage for Colorado right now in total yards. They need a little less than a yard for the first down and the counter action. Walker bending it outside but pulled down from behind. Great play on the outside by James Gary. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, don't forget, we will answer your email. Just dial us up. Email us at foxsports.com on MSN, keyword Ask Knox. That's foxsports.com on MSN, keyword Ask Knox. You want us to run with the Buffalo? You want us to do something with these guys? Just send us an email. We'll try to do it in the second half, Joel. All right, Knoxie. I love it. Knox knowledge. A little Knox knowledge for everybody coming up soon. <laughs> Knoxie in the box. That's right. Need more than a yard. So far, 0 for 4 on third down tries. After the play fake, Holland back against the grain. Will there be a flag? Yes. Going for Walker. They say contact early. Billingsley, and he didn't have to do it. Or Brooks, I should say. He didn't have to do it. It's a tough throw to make. Yeah. Turn and square your shoulders. Mike Hankwitz's defense had this sniffed out. Early, early it was there, but it was too That's late. And Brooks didn't have to come over his back. Spot foul, automatic first down. It's a good call. The contact was over the back before the arrival of the football. And it really wasn't going to be grabbed. It was sailing high. Exactly. And, and the fact that Billingsley is uh, is not participating out there is, is a little bit of a concern that, that knee obviously not responding like you'd hope so the first conversion on a third down for colorado state comes with a little more than three to play and it comes by way of penalty they'll take it 
at the 36. Can they get points before they go to the locker room? That's all they want. Here, pocket passer Whoa. shows a rope. Whoa. Great grab. Finally, Anderson's first touch. So they find Dreesen on the first snap of this drive, starting to their own 20, and a big cushion for David Anderson. You know, Joel, he had 72 catches last year and averaged 18 yards a catch. But as you described, look at that cushion. And he gets the cornerback to turn, completely turn him around. I mean, that's, that's just impressive. And that's tremendous respect for the speed of Anderson by Byron Ellis. West or Lorenzo Lake. Sims, I should say. Westlake Village. Westlake High. Northern San Fernando Valley, Southern California. So first down after the gain of 29. That'll be a false start. Yeah, a little early movement there. So much for success. Prior to the snap, false start, number 33 on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. So 17 to nothing lead for Colorado. A touchdown run by Purify, a sneak by Clatt, and a 31-yard field goal by Mason Crosby. And Justin Holland manufactures some points before halftime. If they get seven, wide open affair in the second half. Justin Holland, the most prolific passer in the history of Colorado high school football. Rewrote the record books, one of only five in the nation yep. in high school football to throw for better than 10,000 yards. Needs to make up five, Dreesen. And underneath, instead of Dreesen, Matt Bartz is first catch. The other tight end, Junior from Concordia, Kansas. And we looked at our Navy trivia earlier tonight. Ron Salam being shut down during his Heisman season by only one team. He did not get the century mark back in 1994. Oh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Badgers. <laughs> <laughs> A winner at home today. No gain on the reception by Bartz. Pocket protection, good throw. And another first down, this time going to Dustin Osborne. Boy, that was a bullet. It was. Dyson went airborne, trying to knock it down. But Holland threw it over the outstretched hands of Dyson. Oh, just over the hands and in front of the secondary. That's a great spot to throw it. I'll tell you, though, Dyson's athletic. He did not miss that by much. He got a decent drop, and he had some nice hops as well. First true freshman to ever start at Colorado at inside linebacker. Right out of high school in Hawaii. He's got those natural football instincts. And outside the 17. Ooh. Houston takes a shot. Houston has not been able to get off tonight. The former Buffalo had 104 yards against his former mates last year. Dyson smoked. You know, Dyson's got tremendous hips now. Uh, the guy is just an explosive football player. Timeout called, and Colorado State has one remaining. Jim Knox, what's coming up at the half? All right, Joe, coming up on the Sonic America's Drive in Halftime Report with Mike Kellen and Billy Ray. They'll take a look at other Big 12 teams in action today. They really had a nice afternoon. Also, the history of the Big 10 and SEC. That's coming your way on the Sonic America's Drive in Halftime Report. Let's turn this camera around right here. Check out the defense. Look at that, huh? Hankowitz and company trying to get them going. Tell you, Hankwitz has done a great job, Noxie. You know, he simplified things. And when you make things simple, there, there's Mike right there in the middle of the, pi of the pack. When you make things simple, that your players play faster because there's he eliminated a lot of element of doubt. And, and they did not want to give up the big play tonight. Anderson's got one. I think there's only been one play of over 20 yards against his defense tonight, that catch by Anderson. And that was their concern coming in because of last year, and giving up so many big plays in a 5-7 and seven season. They gave up 20 plays of 40 yards or more. Oh, That's hard to believe. It really is. And, and think of how many plays, 20, 25 yards or more they gave up. If they gave up 20 of 40 or more, unbelievable. Now second and eight. Colorado State using their second timeout. One left for the Rams in the half with 67 seconds left. Dreesen out of the edge, and it squirts out of the hand of the quarterback, Holland. Fortunately for Colorado State, it felt incomplete. Really? He just lost his grip. He sure did. Colorado had that naked bootleg sniffed out as well. Colorado State having Anderson and Dreesen at different levels of the same side of the field for Holland to throw to. And Colorado was all over it defensively.
Colorado's done a nice job of mixing things up. So now third down coming, and eight from the 15. Well, that's a quiet 7 of 11 for 83 yards, isn't it? Well, most of it coming on this last drive, the current drive. In trouble and popped away. Trying to get it outside once again to Osborne. Got holding in the end zone or interference in the end zone, though. Bur Burrow with good coverage, timing it well. Uh, there is a flag right at the goal line. Yeah. I'm not sure. By the reaction, I think they may have gotten Dominic Brooks. See if it's holding. Holding yep. on the defense. On the three. Half the distance to go. Automatic first down. They got Tyrone Henderson. So Not from the penalties place. have kept this drive alive twice now. Yep. Here he is. Let's see what he does. Oh, that's definite. You got your money's worth there. That's a nice tackle. <laughs> it's more than a hold. It wasn't Man. even looking in that direction. Nope. Ball is almost already gone the other way. Boy. That one was hard to miss by the official standing right there in the back of the end zone. He probably, his jaw probably hit the ground on that one. He had to throw that flag. Well, they do have one timeout left. It's first and goal. Outside of the seven. Will they start it off with Houston or put it in the air? It'll be Houston on the delay, making a miss in the backfield, just to the five. Boy, they have closed on the ball well. Houston just can't get going. You're right, Joel. I mean, it, it looks like the ball's magnetized, and the Buffalo defense are the magnets. I mean, they're just converging. Iwa and Brooks converging to make that stop. But Marcus Houston, the senior from Denver, had a breakthrough game last year in this matchup. It has not been the same situation. No, it, it, it hasn't. And, and look at, at Colorado State last season. He had nine rushing touchdowns. And he had one receiving. Only had two touchdowns rushing in his career at Colorado. The, the knock on Marcus Houston is ball security. You know, he's, he's had a, a fumbling problem during the course of his career. And he sat and he got put on the bench the last two or three games of the season at the end of last year for those very problems. And right now, 16 yards on six carries. He's got a little bullseye on his back. I mean, his teammates uh, don't want him to get off like he did last year. And let's face it, his, you talk about the bumbling problems last year. His Colorado career was marked by injuries. He could not stay healthy here in Boulder. Right. And here's a kid that came out of high school, one of the most decorated and highly recruited running backs in the country. I mean, he was the guy to get. And he stayed in, Colorado, in the state of Colorado, going to the University of Colorado, and it just did not work out. But hopefully things uh, improve for him. Down the stretch here. Without a doubt, his senior season. Here's yeah. last try in Fort Collins. So now it is going to be second and goal on the five. Buying time with play action. Anybody in the back of the end zone? On the three seat. Oh, two. And is it better? No, it falls incomplete. That was a ball up for grabs. Dreesen barely got his fingertips on it. Well, Holland committed the cardinal sin, throwing back across the middle of the field, across your body late. And look at the coverage on Anderson. Nice job. Nice job on Anderson. Anderson is still trying to work to the back of the end zone. Dreesen goes up and tips it. Colorado's got five defensive players around three Colorado State receivers. I mean, I, it seems like they're playing with 14 guys out there. The Buffaloes are flying around the football field to Mike Hankins. Sideline helped Lorenzo Sims that time, didn't it? Yeah, he used it as a 12th defender. You're exactly right, Joel. It'll be third and goal from the five. Moving the pocket by design. Walker can't get there. Now, it's a decision for Sonny. Do you put points in the court or do you go for the touchdown? I say you put points you in the said, court. You're already down by three scores. You need a field goal somewhere along the line. Yep. And this is just nice defense by Colorado. I mean, sure tackling. A designated rollout. You catch, you can break a tackle, you score. Tackle could not be broken. I tell you, that's back to back, very, very fine plays by Lorenzo Sims. He had coverage on Anderson in the end zone. They're, they're going for it. They are going to go for it. Going to be fourth and goal, just outside of the one. Jumbo formation. Do they try to bang it home? They try to draw him offside? No, go. 
Dreesen, back of the end zone, touchdown! Hit Burks, off. the tight end. Hit off. Nice call by the head coach. I'm sure who made the final decision on that, Sonny Lubick, and that's why he makes all that money. Dreesen <laughs> drew the attention yes, he and did. freed up Bartz off the line. But you know, he's a fine player at tight end as well. These offenses are very similar. They have depth at that tight end position. They have a quarterback that can really throw it. Again, semi-roll, back of the end zone. Catch, Holland breaks on the scoreboard. That is huge on fourth and goal at the one. They go into the locker room. So the extra point from Babcock and a new ball game. 10-point lead for the Buffaloes in Boulder. Justin Holland finally got it going. An 11-play, 80-yard drive, almost all of it through the air because they did not have much of a ground game. It was assisted by two defensive penalties to keep the drive alive. And will it be brought back by Bobby Purify? No. And the kickoff from Babcock. And make it mark on that one. So now... At the 20, only 23 seconds left. You take any chances. College football Saturday returns next week. Big 12, twin bill. First, it's going to be Fresno State invading Manhattan. Battle the 12th ranked Kansas State Wildcats and Heisman hopeful Darren Sproles. Then Wyoming taking on AM. We are going to be there. It all begins next Saturday, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on FSN. Now, I got to believe the Buffaloes take a knee and head to the locker room. Yeah, I think so. I think they genuflect and. Uh be thankful for that 10-point lead. Go uh, gather their thoughts in the locker room. All three timeouts on the board still there for Colorado, and I think they're going to stay there, and they will, and that'll do it. So a successful beginning for the Buffaloes, and exactly what Sonny Lubeck needed in that final drive when they got it with a little more than three to play. They went 80 yards. They had to have points going into the locker room. They got it on a big pass play for the tight end, Bartz. Different story now for Colorado State and confidence as we head back downstairs to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. Gary, you got to be pleased. Other than that late touchdown score by CSU, you guys dominated running the football. Bobby Purify is running right, Ralphie right now, over 100 yards. Well, we, we really had a pretty efficient first half on offense, and really defensively we did too. We let a couple penalties uh, get them that drive in the, right here at the end of the first half and get them on the uh, on the board. We just got to shore up our protection a little bit, and uh, we're okay. We're doing fine. Kids are really playing hard. I'm really proud of them. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you, Gary. Joe? Okay, Jim, and he's right. First 30, they, they'll take a 10-point lead after the kind of summer and offseason they have. Absolutely. So Colorado with 17 to 7 lead at the break and let's head back to southern california to join mike goldberg kellen winslow billy ray smith it's time now for the sonic america's drive-in halftime report gentlemen joel thank you very much entertaining first half to say the least this is the sonic america's drive-in halftime report these are the hall of famers kellen winslow billy ray smith i'm mike goldberg let's get right to it start with number two oklahoma as we work our way around the big 12 hosting bowling green Junior running back Kiwan Jones had a career day. A gaping hole, too, on that 11-yard touchdown put the Sooners up 14-7. And Jason White, Will Peoples in the end zone. Oklahoma scores 40 points. Bowling Green, 24. Number seven, Texas, hosting North Texas. Sophomore quarterback Vince Young to senior running back Will Matthews, who barrels in for the score. Easy game. Did you see that? He looked off the receiver, then came, he looked off the defensive back, then came to the right receiver. Nice read. Billy Ray, Kansas State is looking to win its 15th straight home opener. Darren Sproles, not a bad day. How about that? 172 yards. Well, he's going to have to carry the mail for this team because they need a new quarterback and get him in there. Kellen, your alma mater, number 18, Missouri, hosting Arkansas State. As Brad Smith goes, so do the Tigers. He's going well. Right. Pre-game show says B-Rad Smith. That's right. How about those Cowboys? Oklahoma State at UCLA, first quarter, no score. Bernard Morenzi takes the handoff up the middle and walks in for the 22-yard touchdown. Big day on the ground for Morenzi. Yeah, I would say a big day. I would say a huge day, 261 yards. And at Nebraska, Bill Callahan makes... Here we go. Hello, West Coast offense. Joe Daly, four touchdowns in the air in the first 
path. Yes, it is working, and it will work. How it soon? Working. How effective? <laughs> I know. Okay, God, all right. It's good. Western oh, Illinois. Come on. All right, did it work or not, Kellen? Will well, it, it work? It worked. Okay, let's start first. Let's temper these comments with the fact about the competition is against Western Illinois. But it is a good chance for it's Bill working. Callahan and Jay Novell, both formerly of the Oakland Raiders, to come in and get a chance to put this offense in the place. This was just a warm-up game. They're going to get stiffer competition down the road, but this is a great confidence builder for them. Yeah, I would think that the number one guy you have to worry about is, is Joe Dana, the quarterback. I think he comes out and has a really a, a great debut running the West Coast offense for the first time, and I think it, it just tells you that, uh, it, you know, against Division One AA opponents, <laughs> it works. Right, so it's one for one. He did throw a couple interceptions against that team, though, so more on that subject coming up. The defending co-national champion LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge pushed and prodded by the Oregon State Beavers. We break it down. This is the Sonic, America's drive-in halftime report. Welcome back to the Sonic, America's drive-in halftime report. Colorado leads 17-7 at the half. Colorado's Bobby Purify had more rushing yards in the first quarter with 81 than he had in any game last season. On to the SEC between the hedges, Georgia Southern at number three, Georgia. The seniors are going to lead all year long. David Green to Reggie Brown. Is that the fumble, Ruski? Put it on the ground, pick it up, <laughs> take it between your legs, throw it down the field for a touchdown. Good heads up play by David Green, the senior. Freshman Danny Ware had a big day as well. Upset in the making in Baton Rouge, Oregon State, the Beavers, Derek Anderson. Well received and well documented. Anthony, Anthony Wheat Brown. Brown. Anthony Wheat Brown, the four yard touchdown. Beavers. What a name. Anthony Wheat Brown, kind of like Billy Ray Smith. Mm. History in Starkville, Mississippi. Sylvester Croom coaching his first game for the Bulldogs. He would coach his team to victory. Sylvester Croom's going to bring discipline and focus to this ball club, and they played that way today. Hard nosed football, offensive line dominated today against Tulane. Sylvester Croom, his first Gatorade bat. Hopefully the first of many. Congratulations to Sylvester Croom. Back to LSU. No Matt Mock. Now it's quarterback Marcus Randall's game. They still have Justin Vincent, but BR, they're having a ton of trouble with the Pac-10's Oregon State Beavers. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we've seen some of the backup quarterbacking already. I mean, they've already put uh, Marcus Randall on the bench. And I got to tell you, you know, LSU, great team last year. Of course, they deserve the share of the national championship. But you're not just replacing the quarterback. They're replacing Devery Henderson and Michael Clayton. The big playmakers on the outside of that offense, they're really struggling now because they can't find a guy to step up and be that guy for them. Yeah, and a quarterback is only as good as his receivers. I don't care what they tell you. That's the way it goes. The defense is going to have to carry this team for a while. Marcus Spears, who came back, did not go into the NFL draft. That defense has to be the focus point for LSU right now until that offense, Mike, gets on track and gets things moving. So both co-national champions struggle, and maybe even one loses, in their openers. USC last week, LSU today. In our game, Colorado State, what a key touchdown late in the first half. Justin Holland, to who else, Kellen? The, the tight, tight end, end. Matt Barks, he's open. This is the Sonic, America's drive-in halftime report. Welcome back to the Sonic, America's drive-in halftime report. This is the first of nine games for Colorado against 2003 Bull teams. That's tied with Oklahoma. For the most in the nation, they look good in the first half. They lead 17-7. to Tomorrow, special college football Saturday edition as we focus on the Pacific 10 Conference. Fresno State travels to Seattle to take on the Cody Picketless Washington Huskies. Our coverage begins at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific with the Kyocera College Football Saturday kickoff show. More coming up on the Sonic. America's Drive in Halftime Report. How about some history in the Big Ten? Instant replay. Remember that song? Well, it is in college football now. Dante Sanders strips the ball from quarterback Stephen Moffitt. Barry Alvarez doesn't like the instant replay already, but his football team wins big 34 to 6. Whoa, this was the thriller of the day. Number 15 Clemson against a Wake Forest team that defeated them badly one season ago. Double overtime, Charlie Whitehurst, Kyle Browning. And wiping the brow is Tommy Bowden. They win in dramatic fashion. Our game, Colorado State, Colorado, key points late by the Rams. 
they didn't panic. What they did was they had a chance to come down, got a couple of advantageous penalties on Colorado. They took advantage of it, got the ball in. It's a different ball game in the second half. Nine new starters on this on this young Colorado State defense, and they have to tackle. They've got to play just better fundamental football, man. They're missing tackles all over the place. Bobby Purify just running all over the place. Absolutely. He's now the 15th player in Buffalo's history with 2,000 career rushing yards. Congratulations, Bobby Purify with a touchdown in the first. Colorado leads 17-7. Enjoy the second half, everybody. This has been the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by your Rocky Mountain Ford stores. We continue from Boulder, Colorado, and what a weekend to start weather-wise. We couldn't have asked for a better situation. And welcome back once again, Joel Myers, along with Dave Lapp and Jim Knox. And a great start for the Colorado Buffaloes after an off-season of controversy. They wondered how they were going to respond. Well, Bobby Purify has certainly responded. Joel, no question. They wanted to run the football, and in the first half, they did for 153 yards. 110 of those, courtesy of Bobby Purify. He averaged over seven yards a carry. Look at his offensive line. Blow Colorado State back into the end zone. He was making people miss. He also caught the football from Joel Clatt in the perimeter in the flats. There he is bouncing it to the outside, showing that speed. I'll tell you, Bobby Purify was, he, he took advantage of his offensive line's play, particularly in the backside. They did a great job of knocking people around and giving him running lanes, and his vision was outstanding. A great effort in the first half, up front, and by Bobby Purify. 153 yards, Joel. Well, Colorado State is going to receive the second half kickoff, but it looks like it's going to be at their 20 once again. No, it is going to be brought back by David Anderson. And Anderson just got back to the 20. Our Nissan first half numbers, we were just talking about Bobby Purify, the key to the first half for Colorado every time they ran the football, and on first down in particular, they got better than five yards, Dave. Yeah, Bobby Purify averaged over seven. As a team, they averaged over five, and that's the disparity right there. 153 yards rushing to 24. That speaks of dominance at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. That's what Colorado accomplished in the first half. Now, the mindset of Colorado State. They couldn't run it at all in the first half. They start with a pass to Walker on a little kick out, and that's good yardage for them. In comparison to what they were doing on first down, that's a bit more creative than we saw before, and Walker gets six on the catch. You're right, Joel. You know, first down success leads to third down success. If you stay on schedule in first down, you have third and makeable. Plus, you don't get blitzed as much. The way to keep a team from blitzing and pressuring you is to do something on first down, then you have them on their heels. So you're going to run, you're going to throw, and your playbook is wide open to you. So close to six on the throw by Holland. Short side sweep. Houston buried from behind. Jumping on his back, the linebacker, Dawn, the middle linebacker. And our Whataburger leaders and first half numbers. Look at who the leading receiver was. No, no Anderson, no Dreesen. Well, that's balance right there. 100 yards by Clatt, 110 by Purify. Very, very balanced offensive attack. Now, this is key. It may be early in the third quarter, but it's third and a deuce. They need to hang on to the football. You're right. Two tight end set. Looks like they're going to mash people. On the play fake, Dreesen barely got to the marker. He got enough, I believe. Yes. He's got it across the 30, and it wasn't an easy catch in traffic. I'm very impressed with the coverage that Colorado is showing in the secondary and at the linebacker level. I mean, they are playing very, very sound football. Last year, the secondary was in a shambles. But uh, this is a good little play action fake, and, and the response, the inside out pursuit, the hustle is just phenomenal. I mean, linebackers, defensive linemen, all running the play out down from the inside out. And Dyson wasn't faked at all by the play action. No, he wasn't. More play action. Oh. This time going for the bundle. And the wide receiver Osborne doing his best. Did not have an angle, though. Good play by Burrell downfield, the cornerback. Holland showing a little arm strength there. Threw it from the right hash mark to the left numbers about 50 yards in the air. That ball's in the air for a long time. 
coaches say that he can throw the ball straight line in the air for 80 yards. Tried to lead his receiver back to the inside a little bit. Once again, good coverage though. I mean, that was fairly well, uh, fairly well executed by by Pearl. He was there. And that's the young man who started at Colorado, went to Garden City Community College. He's only a sophomore and came back to rejoin the Buffaloes. Spreading the defense a little bit and a perfect toss. Anderson just over the hand of the linebacker again. Anderson put down by Brooks. They move it into Buffalo territory. Well, as competitive as Anderson is, I'm expecting about five catches from him in the second half. He just has innate ability to find openings. He uses his hands real well down the field to separate from people. Once he catches it, he makes people miss. He's just a hard-nosed, tough football player that's very, very confident. He averaged 100 yards a game in receiving last year. First team all Mountain West. Puts him to the first and 10 at the 48 of Colorado. Moving the pocket after the play fake and trying to come back to the man he play fake to Houston. I like the idea, but a low percentage pass with Dyson with him every step of the way. Dyson, uh, once again, great drop. I mean, for him to, him to be able to run like he did. Well, let's go down to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joe, talking to Sonny Lubick, Colorado State head coach at halftime, said they have to find something to do on offense to be productive. And you're seeing it here in the second half. They're coming out throwing. I asked him about how do you stop Bobby Purify? He said the linebackers have to hit the gaps. It is now Sonny Lubick Field at Hughes Stadium. Well-deserved honor in Fort Collins. Houston. Maybe his best run of the game. Oh, oh did he pay at the end, though? Dave, you liked it. Yeah, that was a shot. He got five. It's going to bring up third and five. Man. I mean, it was once he got hit, he was sideways. Ewoo. Ewoo made, a, made a, a real good collision right here. That goal, inside out, that's just, that's good action. And, and again, you know, when you look at defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz, the last time he was here they had tremendous success they averaged 35 sacks a year and they held people to under 17 points a game that's getting things done defensively big play third and five trying to keep the drive alive that started back at the 20 stacked on the wide side goes back the other way and gets the first down it's the man who caught the touchdown parts boy battled for good extra yardage all the way to the 29 so matt Barts, the junior Concordia, Kansas, with a couple of key catches. The touchdown with 23 seconds left in the half, and now a critical third and five. Well, what they did here, watch the stack, and watch they'll stay stacked, but on the back side, they're trying to get the isolation on the linebacker. And that's exactly what they got. Here's the isolation underneath, and the stack guys, it was deception on one side, and the tackle not made by Dyson on that time. Yards after catch, yards after first contact. They put it down to the 28, first and 10. Toss it to the motion side, to Reese's side. Houston high stepping, hurtling for good yardage. That is his best run on first down so far tonight. An impressive start to the second half for Colorado State. He's dropped by John Ackerman, the sophomore from Louisville, Colorado, the inside backer. Well, great adjustments by Sonny Lubick and his coaching staff at the half. And they're balanced on this drive. They're stretching the field with those deep passes to the, the further quadrants of the field, stretching. Colorado's defense a little bit and then pounding them once they have them stretched vertically and, and the key is they scored right at the end of the first half got the ball to start the second half this drive is monumental that they can put more points on the board well they got six on that so he had eight for 23 prior to that run is ninth on second and four holding flag thrown on the plate and is it intercepted? What a pick! One handed Burl coming up with it. One handed, wasn't it? Yes. Get that right hand up there and just curled it in. I think the umpire threw a flag for holding in the middle of the stack. He went for Bart's. Burrow comes up with it. Wait, Colorado State is signaling it's on Colorado. I wonder if there's a defensive lineman that was legal use of hands. Personal foul. It is on Colorado. Boy, has Colorado been burned by three crucial penalties already. Two that kept the touchdown drive alive at the end of the half. And now this, where it would have been a turnover. Yeah, nullifies a, a takeaway. Man. In illegal use of hands, you can't get up to the headgear 
Watch what happens right here. Hit inside, grabs the helmet, up in the face mask, and rips the helmet off. Illegal use of hands by the down lineman. Personal foul. And that the nullifies the takeaway. What a catch, though. That doesn't diminish. That's a tremendous play. But unfortunately, it doesn't mean anything. But boy, to get up and cradle the ball like that, Burl did a good job. It was the Burl curl right there. Yeah, that's a backup end. Alonzo Barrett, a true freshman out of Alabaster, Alabama. That's a big time turnover the other way. It should have been Colorado's football. Instead, the Rams still have it inside the 12, first and 10. And Bimper was bumpered, but the helmet came off, but he, uh, he got the penalty out of it. Houston, nothing again on first down. They have successfully nullified Marcus Houston tonight. They have. You know, it, it all starts with the running game. And in the first half, as we talked about, that was the difference in the game. Colorado ran for 153 yards. Colorado State, a meager 24 yards. And that set the tone for the whole half. But here in the second half, they've got a nice little blend of run pass going here. Get Colorado on their heels a little bit. But Colorado continues a pattern at the end of the first half of that drive, Joel. Penley shooting themselves in the foot. So now it's going to be second and 10, still to the 12-yard line. Opening drive of the second half. Pressure comes. Dump off for Dreesen. Does he get there? Oh. Almost down to the one-yard line. It'll helicopter. be first and goal to the one. Man, that looked like John Elway in the Super Bowl. You know when he had that helicopter shot? I like that. That was airborne. <laughs> Good call. Man. Dreesen was a little hungry on that play, wasn't he? Man. The senior from Fort Morgan, Colorado, wanted the goal line. Check him out. Slow block. Here he is. Slow blocking. And then the linebackers take the deep drop, and he just comes underneath. They lose track of him because he was in pass protection. Now it's whoo. They tried to undress Dreesen. They couldn't quite get it done. Three tight end set. Houston. Nowhere near it. He has stopped at the one, the original line. It'll be second and goal from there. That was they, you know what? If they, this formation is there again, naked bootleg. Yeah, that's true. And, and that, that play to Dreesen, though, was a well-designed, conceived play. They lost track. It was like the old tight end hide. Usually the tight end is involved in run blocking, goes to the ground, linebackers lose track. Of it. This time they had Dreesen in pass protection. Linebackers said not have to worry about him. He slides underneath late. Excellent play. Let's see if they try to hammer the head or take the quarterback out on the edge. Maybe even drive the tight end with the quarterback. Six-minute drive and counting right here. Second and goal. Toss. Houston. Can he turn the corner? Oh. Yes. The ball on the goal line. Touchdown, Colorado State. He had to work for it, didn't he? He sure did. He knocked him sideways. Doesn't matter his body. Like you described, Joel, did the ball break the plane of the goal line? That's all that has to happen. His helmet, his shoulder pads, none of that has to break the plane. The football does. And it all, ha all it has to be is the tip of the football over the very edge of the white line. And, did, and Houston's got it in his inside arm, and he extends it out there, and the official had a good vision of it. And he's got the ball right on the chalk, so touchdown called. The extra point from Babcock. And we've got a brand new ball game. So trailing a one time 17 to nothing, 14 unanswered for Colorado State as they trail by only three. Good call, the ball crossed the plane. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on FSN is brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL Super Bowl 39 by Whataburger, just like you like it. And by Napa Auto Care Centers, Napa. Get the good stuff. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox. We have a good one going in Boulder, Colorado. Former Buffalo, Marcus Houston. The number one on his back. He scored from a yard out. And all of a sudden, only a three-point deficit. Here if I back deep. Nobody's bringing that one home, though. Out of the end zone. Well, one of the most respected reporters coming to FSN and head-to-head -head with James Brown. JB is going to visit with Packers quarterback Brett Favre. Find out what motivates that veteran. Plus, Jay Glazer gets the work out of his life with Bears linebacker Brian Urlacher. Head to head with JB. James Brown tomorrow only on FSN. Check your local listings for the start time Colorado in your area. 
Joe, Colorado State was offsides covering that kickoff. They're going to have to re-kick. The way he kicked it through the end zone, though, it I don't think it's going to be. Oh, it's at, it's at yes. the end. of. Okay, they're penalizing at the end of the kick. Now, Sonny Lubick is in his 12th year at Colorado State. Yes. He has turned around the program completely. It's ironic he's never lost back-to-back -back openers. And don't forget he lost last year 42-35 when they scored the final couple of minutes against him. Ten straight seasons of seven wins or more. Ten straight winning seasons. That's phenomenal. Garifai has the single. He was the force of the first half. But they go up top right away. And on the outside, the catch taken in by Ron Monte. Their experience at wide receiver. Well, so a short gain again, but like a run. Four yards on first down. Absolutely. In, in Colorado State, you have to give them credit. They responded to the uh, knockout punch that Colorado, Colorado is trying to deliver. And they score on the last possession of the first half of, for them and the first possession of the second half. Will Colorado counter? Because Colorado State's out there throwing punches now. It's a long drive. Better than six minutes taken off the clock by Colorado State to get back into the game. In the eye on second and six. Here comes the heat. And almost intercepted. Almost picked off. Ben Stratton. Yeah, the safety Stratton, the junior from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Honorable mention all conference last year, thought he had it. Yeah, and he had he had four interceptions last season. And he almost had one here. Last season he played more corner. There he is, just reading the eyes. Makes a break on the football, reading Platt's eyes. Platt pretty much stared down that primary receiver. He had a much better shot at it than Little Hayes. Little Hayes was the primary target. So now momentum-wise, Dave, this is a big third down for Colorado. Oh, no question. Made a little more than five. Showing the blitz. Here it comes up the middle. It's a perfect time for a screen. Garify will get the first down. What a call. Tremendous. They sold out, and he didn't even follow his blocking, but still got enough. It seemed like they wanted a middle screen that time, Dave. Yeah, Blake Mackey did a good job down the football field, Joel, the wide receiver of, of uh, blocking. The offensive line release, watch Mackey lock it up down. Look at Mackey working on the edge here. That's pretty good stuff right there. And, and because he sustained that block, the first down's generated. So not only the offensive lineman doing a good job in the screen, but the perimeter people blocking as well. So they say that play. We did not see a screen from Colorado in the first half. From the 39, Garifai. Breaking the first tackle and getting again five almost six yards on a first down carry. That was the key to the first half. And look at the drive chart now. Back to the first quarter, Dave. Oh yeah, this look at multiple ten plays, twelve plays. I mean, in eating time up, eight play drive. I mean, that's just ball control right there. And then in the second quarter, only five plays, eighteen yards, eight plays, set up for a field goal. They, they played keep away. Well, That's they scored. In that first quarter. They did score on three of their five possessions in the first half. They'll take that success in the second half. Now it's second and four. Dumping it off again. It's Lawrence Vickers close to the first down. I think he's got it. It'll depend upon the spot. Let's see where they put it down. Colorado has a position in the backfield called the V-back for versatile back. Vickers says it's V-back for Vickers. They've got some big boys in that position that can run, catch, and block. Complete players. Now we talked about the inexperience of the defensive unit. Only three starters back for Colorado State. It would be incredibly frustrating after their drive to get within three if they give up another long drive. Precious timeout is taken, though, by Joel Klatt. So Klatt. Junior quarterback of the Buffalo using the first of three in the second 30. College football Saturday on FSN continues from Boulder, Colorado. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, and Jim Knox on a perfect night for football. And a timeout has been called. Joel Platt using the first of three for Colorado on a first down from his own 49-yard line. A three-point lead for Colorado, but at one point it was 17-0 Buffaloes. 
The back to back drives with scores for Colorado State as Purify weaves his way nicely into the secondary and he's got a huge run all the way down to the 31. Well, what you do is you, if, if in, when in doubt, you run behind your best offensive lineman. Colorado definitely thinks their their best offensive lineman is Sam Wilder. And Purify just slammed it in there behind them. Nice job up front. They just really gashed Colorado State. Get the linebackers leaping over people off balance, almost on the ground. Purify takes multiple Colorado State Rams to take him down. He's not going to go down in the arms of one guy. It's going to take four or five. It gets started by the big fellow Wilder, though. Obviously, the timeout paid off. Yeah, really. 21 yard carry. Really? So they go to a one after the timeout. Slide the tight end, Wallace. Purify again, same side, same result. Good yardage, not as long. But again, we said, when you can get five and six yards on first down running the football, success follows. Well, you know, if you rush for 153 yards in the first half, you, you might as well go back to what's been working for you. Make Colorado State stop it. Don't get away from it yourself because they're having some success offensively. You still have the lead, and you've been running the ball well. Don't take yourself out of your game plan. Keep pounding away, and pretty soon Colorado State's going to have to start crowding that line of scrimmage, and that play-action pass is going to be there again like it was in the first half a few times. Well, Gary Barnett said they want to be physical this year. They want to. He thought that was the most improved part of his team over the last two, three weeks of practice. Delay and counteraction. Purify barely tripped oh. up, but he's got a first down. I think he takes it in. Check that it was jolly, actually. Giving Purify a break. But Barnett said he liked what he saw from his ground game. I, yeah, the most improved part of his team was that offensive line. Let's take a look at Colorado's keys to the game and see how they did. Kicking game was clean. No block kicks, no block punts. They almost blocked a couple themselves. They definitely dominated the line of scrimmage. Big time, both sides of the ball. Very few big plays. Four plays over 15 yards, only two over 20 yards. And two of those four plays over 15 came in that final drive. Sonny Lubick going for it on fourth down was a big message to his team, and they've responded emotionally. So our Napa Auto Parts keys to the game have worked for Colorado. Purified back into the game, but finally some penetration and a stop on the line of scrimmage. No gain on the carry at the 20. As it was shut down, Jones was there, the middle linebacker, a junior from Arlington, Texas, one of the few starters back. And this is the area where you have to still be able to run the football because the field is squeezed. There's less room to run routes. You can't stretch the defense. It's tougher to throw the football in the red zone than it is when you're backed up. And this is where you have to have powerful tight ends and a good offensive line, and backs will hammered in there. Trips. On the near side. With two tight ends. He said they were going to mix things up. It's a flanker oh. screen and in and out of the hands of Monte, his wide receiver. Like a little slip screen, wasn't it? The first down line brought to you this evening by Overstock.com. Save up to 80% every day. Ship it for $2.95. It's all about the O at Overstock.com. And big decision for the O right here, that being the offense of Colorado. They haven't faced third and long all night. They really haven't. They've been very, very efficient and productive, Joe, on first down. No question about that. Five of eight on their third down tries thus far. Three wide receivers in the set. And call start coming up. Yep, early movement. Colorado State started crowding the line of scrimmage, and Colorado flinched a little bit. Right on the snap. Ball start, 78 offense, five yard company, still third down. That's Burrow, the left guard. Transfer on Air Force. Here he is right here, and watch him flinch. Here comes some pressure. He's thinking, oh, I got to get going too, oh, too quick. Yeah, he ran Can't it. move before the ball. Yeah, he, he saw the linebacker and said, I got to get there. You can't move until the ball moves. When you get that two point and three point stance, you can't sneeze, you can't move, you can't do anything. Seven penalties now for half the football field for the Buffaloes, and some of them have been real painful on the defense, keeping drives alive, alive for Colorado State. Well, three in particular have kept two touchdown drives alive. Now Clatt, pressure comes, corner of the end zone, almost intercepted. Great read by Herbert. He blanketed the wide receiver. Herbert's a player. He went for Duran on that side. Her Herbert's got. The size of a safety and the and the cover coverability of a corner. Watch him up here. 
he sees the ball. He says, it's my ball. It's not the receiver's ball. I mean, he turned himself into the primary receiver. He's got his head turned around at a perfect time. And here he is on the edge of the field goal block team trying to block the kick. Crosby hit a 31-yarder. This one from 42 is no good. Shank it. Hooked it. So Crosby, 7 of 9 last year, now 1 of 2 so far tonight. And the momentum, you have to believe, it's belonging to Colorado State, battling back from a 17-0 deficit. They get it back in good field position when we come back as the Rams look for their first lead of the game. They've got it at their own 25. Brand new ball game as Colorado has given it up, and Colorado State only down by a three. Our poll question, instant replay. Good for college football. You like it at home, obviously. Almost 70% that logged on with us tonight on FoxSports.com. Houston in the backfield is a single. Trace in the motion man. Shift in Mo. And Houston finally got a seal on the outside. Best run of the night. Flag on the play. We normally see a holding call. It was thrown by the linesman on that seal on the far side of the field. Yep, it was Anderson, I think, Joel. Anderson's the one that got the block, but I think he's the one that's going to get caught with his hand in the cookie jar and called for holding on the edge. Holding. Offense, number four, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Anderson's a physical kid. And he's trying to do the best he can on, on the uh, on the perimeter. And it was, that was it right there that you saw. He was he was hooking a defensive end, which tells you what they, what how they feel about his his ability to match up physically with these Chesney that he was matched up with. So now it's going to go back all the way to the 17 yard line. From the report of the infraction, first and 18. Throwing on first down and going for the bundle. Man available, Walker, and he overshoots him. He had him, too. He did. Walker came to a complete stop in his route. I'm not sure it was a, a stop and go at that point. And then after stopping, he couldn't get restarted fast enough to run into the football. Yeah, they said he had an unbelievable arm. Great strength. He displayed it there, and they said the difference between Bradley Van Pelt and Justin Holland is a pure pocket passer. Those of you just joining us, Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, and a good start tonight in Boulder, Colorado. Colorado State battling back after they were trailing by 17. They've got it with 3.59 to play in the third quarter. Second and long deep in their own territory. For the last two drives, they have consistently moved the football. They did not do that over their first four series. Counteraction delay, not much for Houston. Pays at the end across the 20. Dabdu getting to the running back. At one point, this game was 17 0 Colorado. Now 17 14. What you'd expect in this rivalry series. It's only a rivalry if both teams win their share. And in the last six games, each team has won three times. This is now officially a rivalry. Colorado State has not been able to win in Boulder since 1986. It would be huge for Lubick's program. Third and long. More than 14. Time for the quarterback. And a lane to throw to Dave Anderson. He's got the first down as he's hit by Brooks. That was a rifle. It really was. He got inside of Wheatley. Wheatley, respecting Anderson's speed, gave some big cushion. He was expecting quicker help inside from the safety. There's Wheatley. Squatting a little bit, Anderson gives him the outside fake and takes it to the inside. Ball's delivered on time before safety arrival. So he found the seam between cornerback and safety very effectively. Before Brooks could make the hit, Holland had whipped it in there. Yeah, he's close to his average last year. He averaged 100 gar yards a game receiving. He's already got 70, and we've got a ton of time left. Reverse action for the wide receiver, but sliding down is George Hill, the redshirt freshman from Corona, California. So that's a loss and a momentum killer potentially. Drops them back about five, six yards. Iwu was there and Don was there. It was well read. They, they played their defensive responsibility, stayed at home. Gadget did work. Exactly. And really, I think, I think Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, overall has to be pleased 
with the lack of mental mistakes by his defensive unit other than the penalties. The penalties have really, really hurt and kept drives alive for Colorado State. And most of the penalties from the inexperience of the secondary. Yep. We'll get to that in just a moment. From the 35. Again, oh. great pocket protection. And a catch by Anderson. He's out of bounds, but he's got the first down up to the 48 of Colorado. And now that we're talking about the secondary, Wheatley a sophomore. Right. Billingsley the most experienced, but he's hobbled by a bad knee. Brooks a sophomore, Burrell a sophomore. They were worried coming in about their secondary. And, and rightfully so. And, and look at the look at the respect Wheatley has for Anderson. He just runs great routes, makes the catch, and then steps out of bounds with that left foot. But it all starts with the protection, as you described, Joel. You give Holland that much time to throw, Anderson's going to get open. Rams look for their first lead of the game in Buffalo territory with the first and ten. Houston just can't do it on first down. Slicing through was Ewa, the outside backer, a junior from Houston. The first down line brought to you this evening by Overstock.com. For name and brand products at clearance prices, it's all about the O, Overstock.com. You know, you, you look at this game, and, and Colorado comes out with that intensity and the emotion of, of playing that first game. And you have to respect Colorado State for weathering the storm and, you know, and, and keeping the poise to gather themselves and come back. This is a ball game big time. New running back for the first time with a flag on the play. It's Yana Rice, the junior from Lakewood, Colorado, at 5'11", 200 pounds. He's been back on kicks. That's his first carry out of the backfield. Yeah, it's going to be a hold on the edge. I don't know if they're going to call the, the tight end, Bartz, or if they're going to call one of the wide receivers, maybe Morton. Somebody on the edge was grabbing, though, for Colorado State. Disregard the flag. Picking it up. It'll make it third and ten after he got the two yards back on the loss by Houston. That's the second flag that's been picked up tonight by the officials. Well, you just talked about the pocket, the lanes that Holland has to look through. Now the offensive line has done a good job. Can they hold up, though, on an automatic passing down? Holland needs 10, and he's got three wide receivers in the set with the tight end over to the near side, the wide side of the field. Underneath, it won't go for it. Osborne is going to be short of the first down by about five. Brooks, sure-handed tackle with a strong safety. Well, there's inexperience at the guard position for Colorado State. Watch the blood cross. Both linebackers blitzing and crossing inside, trying to confuse the interior of the Colorado State offensive line. Fortunately, a three-step drop, and the ball was gone. But because of that pressure, the quick pressure, had to throw underneath well short of the first down. So Mike Hankwitz heating it up at an opportune time and, and bringing the pressure inside, which was smart. Babcock punts it away. And back for the Buffaloes. It is going to be Isaiah Crawford. He'll stay away from it. And it'll take a Colorado roll. So close to the 20-yard line, that is a break. A real break. It could have been back inside of their own 10. And the Buffaloes get it back up by three. A couple of years ago, Rams quarterback Bradley Van Pelt starred in this game, engineering a drive that covered 84 yards. Seven plays led the Rams to a 19-14 victory. Head coach Sonny Lubin and the Rams shining in the moment in the Mile High City as we head down to Jim Knox. Knox right, thank you. Thank you, Joel. Bradley Van Belt right near. He, he's trying to apply for a sixth year. You want to go back out there and quarterback for Colorado State? <laughs> I got a uniform right now in the locker room with cleats and everything, you know. My head hurts so much. This is a very intense game for me. <laughs> what was your biggest memory playing in this game, Bradley? You know, I had a lot of memories, but really it was last year. Obviously, the last time I played, I lost to the Buffaloes. It was a very heartbreaking game. And now I'm sitting here, so it's, uh, you know, hopefully this time ends a little better. Your thoughts of Justin Holland's performance so far? Justin's a warrior. Justin's a great quarterback. You know, he had a little rough start, but that's how it goes. You're in a hostile territory. It's his first time down here, but he stood up. He stood up in that fire, and he's playing well now. All right, guys, take a look at this. He, he's got the cape on. Look at this. Turn around, Bradley. Look at that. He's like super Bradley <laughs> fan <laughs> over here at Colorado State. All right, Bradley, appreciate it. Thanks very much. Tough player, boy. He, he may make the practice squad for the Denver Broncos. 
I would, be, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to get in a uniform and hide try to get into the game before it's all over tonight at some position. End of three. Great one so far in Boulder. Buffaloes by three. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week on FSN. We'll look at the Jack in the Box game summary in just a moment, but the first snap of the fourth quarter cut back again. Wow. Purify. He'll be over 150 yards after this carry, and he's got a first down going out of the 41. Well, we were just looking at some of the numbers for Bobby Purify. You can update those after that long run. His 20th carry. So he got 16, so that's 20 for 158. What an average for Purify on opening night. Unbelievable. And they may want to do that more. And Dave, we were just talking about while we were away, how many possessions remain for each team. Right. If you run Purify, you could limit Colorado State if you especially if you get a touchdown out of it, limit Colorado State potentially to only one possession in the fourth. Well, it's interesting. Purify was the ground game to get going. Anderson, the, the, the passing game for Colorado State, the strengths, both guys stepped up. Now, Purify gets the break. Vickers jolly in the backfield, but they're throwing on first down and wide of the intended target, trying to get it down to the tight end or the wide receiver, Evan Judge, in fact, the junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Once again, though, you have to tip your cap to a few people. I'm tipping my cap to the Colorado offensive line. Purify didn't get that 158 yards all by himself. And they've done a good job front side and back side, giving him running lanes. I'm also tipping my cap to Colorado State. In the first quarter, they had six snaps for nine yards. Colorado came out with the emotion, the intensity. They came out out of their minds. Took a 17-0 lead. Colorado State took those punches and came right back and it's a three-point game. you got to tip your cap to them as well. Without a doubt. Could have been a blowout. They bounce back, though. Jolly, not much on second and ten. Just a couple. So a huge third down for the Colorado State defensive unit, trailing by only three. And this the opening minute of the fourth quarter. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, and Boulder on a beautiful night for football. Rained all day, and then it stopped. Just about kickoff time. Football weather in early September. You're not kidding. This feels like the middle of fall. That is my favorite time of the year. Football, night action, under the lights, big rivalry. Doesn't get any better than this in college football on FSN. Being an 80-year-old ballpark. Now, can they convert on third down? Plenty of time no. for Platt. Oh. And off the fingertips. Trying to get it to, once again, his wide receiver spray. He looked like he just mistimed his jump off balance a little bit. Yep, just maybe a little, a little bit too tall. But you're right. I think he did. He, he, he wow. when the when the ball got there, he's on his way down. Yeah, it sailed though. Yep, it did. Put a little bit too much air under it, but top. Well, that's close. I mean, it hits the fingertips. You know, in spray, he's gonna say, "Man, if I can get my hands on it, I gotta catch it." It had to clear the linebacker right. for Joel Clatt, right. but he actually had it sail on him. He, did, he cleared it by too much. Linebacker did get a nice drop, though, and that's that's key in those zone defenses. If the linebackers get deep drops, it takes away throwing lanes for sure. Torp is punting for only the second time tonight. Now, will Anderson have an answer? The big play. Beautiful punt by Torp. Anderson inside the 10 at the 9. Couple of big blocks. Flags on the play, though. It'll come back. Anderson with great field position, but it's going to be negated across the 35 out near the 37. Well that was close. I, that, that was man if, uh, if the earlier one was not uh, an illegal block in the back that one I didn't think was as bad. It nullifies I believe a 29 yard return but we've already seen flags picked up. Yeah. But you're right Joel. Illegal block in the back by the return team number 28. Be half the distance to go. First down. That's not just a five yard penalty, half the distance to Cole. That's a 34 yard penalty because, as you describe, it nullifies the 29 yard return. And then you add five more yards. That is one third of the football field penalty. Oh, that was worse than yes. I thought. That was definite in the, in the back. You could have a, a better sense about you than doing that. Great job by Anderson nullified. It turns out to be a 34 yard penalty on the Rams backing them up. And special teams have hurt Colorado State tonight. They were fortunate. There could have been a couple of punts blocked for the Rams tonight. So deep in their own territory. Got to take care of the football. Down by three. Houston is the single. Throwing out of his own end zone. Holland 
Going oh. for the big one. He's got it. What a grab. Morton taking it in. His first catch. A true freshman from Riverside, California. I think it's the first time he's been on the field tonight. And Colorado State said when they were going to go deep, they were going to test Burl. And Burl has stood up to the challenge so far. But Holland is about five yards deep in his own end zone and throws the ball to the 45-yard line, the opposite 45-yard line. That is arm strength, and that is accuracy with that deep ball. That's a football player born to quarterback. From the 45, first and 10. What a change, a sudden change. Anderson, the motion man. Slipping out, he's available underneath. They left him uncovered for some reason. The man ran away and went to Dreesen, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right. He went to the deeper uh, the deeper route, and you can't leave Anderson. And, and what that does, this is a well-conceived play as well, because he has a two-way go, two levels. So what do you do? I mean, you have a two-way go, and it just wasn't handled assignment-wise well enough by Colorado in the secondary. And he did. He went to Bartz. He was one of the tight ends. He took Bartz instead of Anderson. So a breakdown of the coverage inside the 32. He started at the five. They're going through the air. The run has not been there. Anderson still averaging over 20 yards a catch. More play action. Holland with a gun. In stride. He hits his wide receiver for another first down. Good grab. Dustin Osborne. Well, when he squares his shoulders. What a pocket passer. Colorado clinging to a three-point lead as we welcome those of you just joining us back in the Midwest. Phenomenal game in the fourth quarter in Boulder. Two minutes gone by. 17-0 Colorado at one point late in the first half. From the 11, first to 10. Houston running up the back of his own blockers, only two, and that's been the story. They have not been able to get Houston any yardage on first down. So it's going to be second and eight from the nine. You are seeing a quarterback's confidence grow. In the first quarter, Holland was shell-shocked. I mean, Colorado came out, and they got after the Colorado State offense, and, and Holland really didn't know what was happening. But boy. Right at the end of the first half, he started to get his bearings, as did the rest of his teammates. He can't do it by himself. And they are on a roll now. Anderson, the slot man on the wide side. They'll go the other way to the short side, and Houston won't even get to the line. He fell down right at the 10, loses a yard. So they use the deception on the outside, the wide side of the field, trying to come back the other way. And now, if you decide to throw the ball, which I'm sure they will on this third and nine, it's paramount that Holland does not try to force anything. You're in the red zone. Worst case scenario, you have to feel like you're going to tie this football game. You don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. You don't want to take a sack to make it a more difficult field goal. You definitely don't want to throw an interception or turn it over. Well, now a timeout is going to be taken by Justin Holland. It's the first of the second half for the Rams. So two timeouts remaining for Colorado at Colorado State. Tomorrow, it's a special edition of College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera. Fresno State tries to upset a Washington team. Hopes to get back among the Pac-10 elite All-Stars. 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific, only on FSN. What a huge play right here. Monstrous play. Well, Island on this drive started at their 5. 3 of 3 for 86 yards. He's thrown for almost 270 in the game. This is second career start. He started in the San Francisco Bowl when Bradley Van Pelt was hurt at the end of the regular season. Now, can he engineer another nine yards or get in the end zone? Here's the blind side and the blind side hit came from Alex Logan. The end. The sophomore from Torrance, California, prevented the conversion on third and nine. And, and, and it was there. It was there. Holland. Holland had it. And Holland was going to deliver it. Look at this. It was there. He was trying to trying to thread it in there, and and, and he got hit. Lagan just drills him from behind as he checks. He's, he's trying to hit that slant. That's just good pass rush on the backside. Lagan stepped up and made a made a good play. But boy, Holland's swagger is 
Definitely noticeable now. Babcock for the tie from 27 yards away. It's all even. They have battled all the way back from a 17 to nothing deficit. We shouldn't be surprised. Every year it goes down to the wire between these two teams. Momentum is an unbelievable thing, isn't it? So it's all tied up in Boulder as we come back with 11.42 to play. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. And by Overstock.com, it's all about the O, Overstock.com. All even at 17. Not a bad beginning to our Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week. No it's question. going to be kicked away. Wheatley back, along with Robinson. Kevin Mark gets into it for Colorado State. Wheatley will bring it back five yards into the end zone. He's got a lane, but it closed in a hurry. Blocking broke down as he's out across the 22. Time again for a Dr. Pepper game break. And let's go to Mike Goldberg. Mike. Joel, an overtime thriller in Baton Rouge. Number four LSU scored on their first possession. Oregon State answered the touchdown, but redshirt freshman Alexis Cerna misses his third extra point of the game. And the defending national champions escape. Guys, they trailed with a minute five left, converted a two-point conversion, and won in overtime. What a football game. Mike, wow. that's when you're living really right. I'm telling you. Man. You get that many misses on extra points from a redshirt freshman. And late in the game to force overtime. Sometimes the game gets a little too big for people. Back it goes to Purify, who was their workaholic early. And he's got another five on first down up to the 28. Purify couldn't ask for much more other than a victory for sure, but he's on pace to rush for at least 200 yards. What a start to his senior campaign that would be. Well, one side, you don't want to waste an effort like Purify has had. On the other side, like Justin Holland has had in right. his second career start. And Anderson. Without a doubt, Anderson's been a second half scorer. No question. I mean, that kid, he is a competitor. He has a capital C on that chest for competitive work. They punch three on the side of the field. They're going to a purify. Whoa. He's into the secondary. Look out. Bump down and a, maybe a touchdown saving tackle by Ben Stratton, the strong safety. Turned the corner pretty well, didn't he? He sure did. That looked like student body left, you know, old, the old USC play. Just pitch it out there and get those offensive linemen out in front. Everybody pulls. And look at the look at the convoy. I mean the escort service out in front of Bobby Purify. Flynn O'Neill, the tackle, couldn't even find anybody to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Purify's gassed. I think they're gonna have to change the oil and well he should be used to the altitude. Put some high octane in there. He's and now got 22 carries for a buck 87. First and ten from the 48. It's even at 17 with 1035. Left in the contest. Will it be an end around? Yes, for the first time, Monte. So they go with the reverse. It worked better than the reverse that they tried for Colorado State after they got a first down, and George Hill slipped down with a loss of six. Instead, it's about seven for Monte. Sean Watson on a nice little roll now, the offensive coordinator. Colorado trying to answer. I mean, Colorado State has had answers for sure, down 17 points. 17 unanswered to tie it up. And Colorado answer as well. It'll be second and a short three. Vickers battling, but nothing there. Only to the 40 for a yard. Now crucial, third down. Third and a couple. I think you're going to think about four down territory here if you're not successful on third. Well, we were talking about it while we were away. The game turned on a fourth down play at the end of the first half when right. Sonny Lubeck, down 17 to nothing, decided I'm not settling for three. With fourth and goal to the one, he went for the score. And, and that, that sends a message to your team. Sonny Lubeck saying, look, I know we're in dire straits. I have confidence in you guys. Reward me for making this Riverboat gambler decision, and they did, and that was the beginning of the turning point. Purify back in for the critical third down, battling, goes for it, and gets it. Boy, he won't be denied. No. Huh? It looked like Stratton was going to get there. He got three, he needed two. Talk about finishing plays and finishing blocks. Pretty good inside zone deal done there, but Adkins 
Lost the battle there, Purified just ran him over. But now first down at the 37. Move the chain, start the clock, inside of nine to play. Now they had overtime in Baton Rouge. Wouldn't be shocked if we saw it here in Boulder. In the eye, Purified. Needed more than just the fullback as a lead blocker. Still got about a yard. This is why Purify gained that weight and strength to finish games when the game's on the line in the fourth quarter. And it did not only non-conference games, but particularly Big 12 games. He added 25 pounds. We talked about it at the very top of the telecast. Played at 190 last year, challenged by his running backs coach in spring ball. And he became committed from that point on. He said he's also faster with the additional weight. Yeah, that's good weight now. He's cut. Purify the signal with a two tight end formation. Purify can't get outside that time. So now third and long. They haven't faced it all that often. It'll be third and nine. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Name brand products and clearance prices. It's all about the O. Overstock.com. Joel, I think this is where you have to start thinking about four down territory. I mean, if you punt it and it ends up in the end zone, you're only, you know, there's very little yardage differential that they get the ball at the 20 instead of the 36. They do have a veteran, though, in John Torp to try to pooch it out inside the 10. I, 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 depending on what happens here on third, it's going to be critical. Here comes the blitz. A middle screen. Oh. It won't work, though. Garify is going to be buried. Colorado State did a great job of retracing their steps. Ripping the first one. The underneath tackle. In fact, Chris Kevin, the senior from Tampa. Joel Klatt had to put so much air under that screen, middle screen, because of the pressure. You see? It gave Colorado State time to react and close on it. And actually, do you think Kiffin has seen much film? Son of Monty Kiffin, yeah. defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers. Yeah, it, they say he's going to be a coach. Look, he had to loft it, goes in. And look at the guys retrace their state steps and get back on it, the down lineman. Because of the pressure, Joel Klatt had to really loft it up. Costly timeout. Colorado State calling a timeout on a punt. They've only got one remaining now in the half. 6.48 to play, even at 17. See if Torp can get it out inside the 10. Colorado State Rams of Sonny Lubeck about to get the ball back, looking for their first lead of the game. Their first score came at the end of the first half. Parts the tight end on fourth and goal to the one. Then Houston barely, by a matter of inches, stretched it, got it in. And the equalizer on the field goal of 26 yards by Babcock. And in a breakdown where Babcock matches up with Crosby, you've got to like the experience of Babcock right. when it comes to place kickers. And, and speaking of uh, long well, distance field goals, go. here we go. After the timeout, 55 yarder. They were going to punt. Now yep. they're going to try the 55 yarder. Crosby for the lead. Oh, he drilled it. He's got plenty wow. on it. Down the middle. Wow. Crosby puts him on top. Gary Barnett said to us during the course of the week, you know what? I'd even have this guy kick a 75 yarder. He's got that kind of range. And he said during that timeout, I've got a guy with a leg, and he hit it. Like a seven iron, that wasn't a three iron. He got some trajectory, some immediate elevation. What a rocket off of that right foot by Crosby. Woo. Anderson taking a line drive at the five from Crosby. Good field position all the way out to the 30 yard line on the return. Big 12, Dr. Pepper game of the week. All brought to you by Overstock.com. It is all about the O. So Gary Barnett has regained the lead with the first points for Colorado in the second 30 minutes of play. And what a gift. It was a punt from Torr before Colorado State called a timeout. They had the punting unit out there. Yeah, well, Colorado State had their defense still out in the field, so they called a timeout, and Gary Barnett said, you know what, we're going with the big boy's leg. Holland with heat coming Pick back, it. and it should Ooh. be intercepted, and it is intercepted. Can he take it back now? Ewan down the sideline. He's in. Touchdown, Colorado. 
boy, that was his eyes got big on that when I was playing linebacker myself. It's like, man, that thing floated there was a cardinal sin by Holland to throw back over the middle. A 37-yard return by Brian Ewa, the junior from Houston. He was a starter at strong safety last year. Now going back against the flow did work for Holland. Yeah, he threw back late across his body to the middle of the field and just floated out there for Ewa. So points off a turnover. And Crosby makes it a 10-point lead. So that's 10 over the last 30 seconds for Colorado. The action, gonna roll to the right, throw back late across his body to the left. It floats, pick, underthrown by about five yards. Just didn't get enough under it. Throw back late, off balance, falling away from the line of scrimmage because of the pressure, not enough on the football. Just ill-advised, obviously. If Holland had it back in his hand to do over again, he would not have made that throw. And not only the interception, but great defensive teams score. Turnover, touchdown is what big-time defenses do, the top defenses in the country. That's the statistic that is always big, and Colorado got one. Well, last year, the big plays burned Colorado. Now their defense comes up with one of their own in the season opener. But still plenty of time. The only problem for Colorado State, 6.25 on the clock, I'd say plenty of time if they had three timeouts on the board. Right. They only have one left. Anderson. Deanna Rice waiting for the kick again for Mason Crosby. The way Holland can throw it, though, deep, where there is a lot of time. Got under this one. He goes to the next counter. I'm starting to believe Gary Barnett about Crosby. <laughs> Set down to Jim Knox and that kid from outside Austin, Texas. Yeah, I tell you what, I had a chance to talk to Mason Crosby yesterday during a walkthrough, and he told me he also gained weight during the offseason. His leg is that much stronger. He says he feels comfortable from 60 to 65 yards out, and a big person that helped him during the offseason, a guy that lives in his neighborhood back in Georgetown, Texas, Matt Stover, who, of course, kicks for the Baltimore Ravens, guys. And kicks well, Knox, even. I'm not sure he has that kind of leg strength. He has great leg strength, but boy, Crosby, that thing was off the charts. I think that would have been good from 65 or 70. Yeah, the 55-yarder he hit had plenty of room on it. Man. And, and, and he had a nice trajectory. It wasn't like it was a low-line drive. And that brings your kicker in a good way into the game more often. But if he's not on target, field position-wise, it can certainly hurt you. No doubt. First and 10 for the 20. Long field for Holland. They've got to throw on every down, trailing by 10. Pocket held up well. And on the comeback route, it's Anderson. That is what tests arm strength. The deep out pattern. The 14-yard out, the 18-yard comeback, those kind of routes are what tests the quarterback arm strength. And Holland steps right into the pocket and fires a rocket on that 14-yard out. And, I mean, it wouldn't have gotten wet going through a car wash. And for him to do it after making the big mistake shows you the guts that he's got to be able to pull the trigger that effectively. And the 15 to the 35, first down. Blitz off the edge. Dreesen got it. Nice. And another completion. This time to Osborne. But Dreesen got that little chip with the cornerback blitz coming. And Holland is a quarterback. You know, tragedy strikes, what do you do? Do you collapse or do you come back strong? This kid's coming back strong. That's another strike. I mean, it's got some RPMs on it. Holland has got an incredible power to hanging off of that right shoulder. There's no doubt. Yeah, of course, in college football, the clock is stopped every time they move the chains. And this time, they have not reset it yet. Now it'll roll. Plenty of time left for this puppy. From outside the 47 of Colorado. Good pocket protection and the quick whip. It's complete. Walker's got it. 
inside the 40 to the 39, short of the first down by a couple. This reminds me of the prior drive. They were ripping the ball in the passing game between the 20s. They got in the red zone where the field compresses and there are tighter spots and holes and, and tougher to throw. And they stalled a little bit in that red zone. Let's see how this one pans out. Need two for the first down. Haven't tried to run the football, starting back at their own 20 yard line. Houston stays in the backfield. Won't try this time either. Will there be a flag? No. Trying to get it again over to Walker. And check that. It was George Hill that time. Burl, the Colorado State sideline felt that Burl went over his back, went over Hill's back to make a play on the ball. Boy, Holland rips it though. That is rocking. And you know what? Could have been called. He had that arm wrapped yes, around him from behind the right arm. Yes, he did. Could have been called. Boy, is that a pretty ball. Tell you, Holland may split some webbings in those fingers from time to time. Yeah, there's no doubt. Everything's four down territory now for Colorado State. Yep. They don't convert here, they'll go for it. Third and two. Quick one on the turn in, and it's complete. Anderson hangs on despite taking a shot from Sims, the junior from Fresno. Boy, right on his hip pad, the helmet. College football Saturday coming back next week. A Big 12 doubleheader first Fresno State into Manhattan, taking on 12th ranked Kansas State. And Heisman hopeful Darren Sproles in Wyoming and AM down in College Station. See if the Aggies can kind of bounce back after the loss to Utah. It all starts next Saturday, noon Eastern. 9 Pacific on FSN. After that play, Anderson took such a hit, he got knocked out of his shoes. He had to come off the field to put his, his right shoe back on. Big conversion on third and two. Out on the edge, buying time. Holland floating for the corner. Jump ball, oh. dual possession, and Walker wow. wins the battle. Touchdown, wow. Colorado State. Flag on the play, though. Man, is that confidence Holland has in his receiver? He even throw it. He had confidence in Anderson to play before because he knew Anderson was going to get lit up. Pass interference on the defense. Who is the flag? Let's down. Now, big decision after this conversion. Sonny Lubick, do you go onside kick no. or do you kick it deep and let your defense try to hold it? Too much time. So he threw it up in a battle between Brooks coming over to help out. And actually with the corner on that side. Tested catch. Yes. Won by Colorado State. Huge extra point. Babcock gets it. Gets it. Back to a three point deficit. So the difference right now, the long return by Ewa. And Colorado State is back in the game. Hey everybody, Tim Rink, David Diaz, and Fonte in the Fox Sports Net Studios. The Rocky Mountain Showdown is winding down, but our coverage only beginning. We'll be going in the locker room. We'll talk to head coach Gary Barnett, head coach Sonny Lubick, and I'll break down what went right and what went wrong. All right, that's coming up after the game of the Rocky Mountain Sports Report to follow Colorado State and Colorado and the rest of the day in college football, including Northern Colorado's game against North Dakota State and a very tough day for Fisher DeBerry and the Air Force Falcons. He's a former high school quarterback, two-time league player of the year. He's only a freshman out of Lancaster, California. That's John Walker. What a catch. Wheatley will bring it out of the end zone. And will he be rewarded? No. Barry belted back at the 14-yard line. So Colorado now with the pressure on them to hold on to the football. Let's head back to a Dr. Pepper game break with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Joel around the Big 12. Senior Cedric Benson of number seven Texas held on to the football a lot today against North Texas. The only tailback in the nation with three straight 1,000 yard rushing seasons. Well on his way with nearly 200 yards rushing today. Everyone a winner, including Nebraska, who aired it out in Bill Callahan's debut. What a game you guys have for the open. It is pretty incredible, Mike. And we thought even at 17 to nothing, Sonny Lubeck's too good a coach and they've got too good a program. It wasn't going to be a blowout. Now out of the backfield, Jolly to go back against the grain. Got about three, almost four on first down to the 18. 
Downstairs we go. Noxie. Hey, Joe, you look over to my right. Bobby Purify barely jogging on the field. You know, he sat out the last couple of plays. He's really winded, running over 150 yards in this high altitude. Bobby Purify is now running out of gas. It's going to be interesting to see if he has much in the tank left before this game ends, guys. Kind of surprising, though, Dave, because he lives here. Yeah, that's true. Usually you get used to it. You know, I think some of it, a lot of times, if you get a big adrenaline rush, that adrenaline takes it out of you, and it's hard to recover. I mean, he may have come out out of his mind in that first half when he rushed for 80 and really, really never got his, got his back. He's back in there now. Could he deliver with a three-point lead? No. They will not let him turn the corner that time. Getting out, Courtney Jones. He showed up all over the place tonight, the middle linebacker. Well, he really has. You know, taking my hat off to all kinds of people tonight. I'm losing hats. I don't have many left, but... Got to take it off to Holland. You got to take it off to Sonny Luka. Going for that fourth down play right before the half of the touchdown. And then right here. Look at Colorado State's front seven. Get off block, separate, and gang tackle. It's pretty good, uh, pretty good reaction to the play and to the ball right there. So the biggest third down of the game both ways. Colorado State has to have the stop. Clock working against them with only one time out of the board for the Rams. Trailing by three. Can they hold them? They should get the ball back close to midfield if they do. Pocket holding up. Klatt's got a man and overshoots down the middle. Zipnuski, first time he's gone in the direction of Zipnuski. Colorado State and Cicero in the area. Zipnuski gets over the linebackers. Safety's there. Lance Cicero does a good job making sure that he doesn't grab. Just goes up and kind of chest bumps him a little bit. Ball not catchable. And the incompletion. Doesn't hurt Sonny Lubick at all. Stopping the clock with 2.50 to play. So they couldn't get a first down in the most important possession of the game, where Only they could have run out the clock. Only one timeout left for Colorado State. Let's see what kind of field position they get, because with 2.50 left, that might be a moot point. Anderson waits for the punt back at about the 38. Torp gets into it oh, and sends out a wow. beauty. Inside the 25. Turning the corner, Anderson, and tripped up. Coming over to the near side. What a play by the Buffalo special teams man. Downfield, Anderson, the defensive back, as we head back to Jim Knox. All right, real quick, Joel, time to answer an email. Brian from Denver wants to know what's the mood in the stands. You know, riots in the past, but right now I'm proud to say these guys well behaved. Colorado State right here. So far, so good. Yeah, we know there have been problems in the past, but this year we're just trying to Root for our team as positive as we can and have a positive attitude about it. What about you, Colorado? We're out here just to have a good time and make sure our team wins. Here we go. So far, so good, guys. Let's keep it that way, all right? 15-yard return, Doxy. Short field now from the 38. Holland. Plenty of protection and time on the deep out. Wow. It's complete. Finds George Hill. He's got a first down in Buffalo territory, just shy. Of the 45, no. They say yeah. he did not hang on to the football. He had it before he was hit and then bobbled it. What a thrill by Holland once again, though. From the left hash mark, throws a 14-yard out to the right sideline on the money, and it splits his hands. I mean, he lost control of the ball before the contact was made, but Holland could not throw a better ball. This kid is courageous in the pocket for him. Second and 10 at the 38. Looking down the middle, Anderson Man. comes down with it. What is you know you're going to take a shot. He gets it to the 41. There's a what lot of second half for David Anderson. Oh, yeah. A lot of confidence between quarterback and receiver. And Anderson, he knows he's going to take a shot. Holland knows he's going to take a shot. But he delivers the ball, and Anderson makes the play. Confidence in each other, and they're rewarded with a big connection. Because that is not bad pass defense right there. Close to field goal territory already for Babcock. At the 41, trailing by three, first and 10. Again, lane to throw through, and he's got it. First down, goes to Osborne. This pocket, the offensive line has done a super job. They really have, you know, and, and, and now Mike Hankwood's defensive coordinator finds himself in the, in the crosshairs. You know, do I blitz? If I blitz, I'm not sure my coverage is going to be able to, to hold up. 
But if I don't, and I don't get any pressure, it can't hold up. It's kind of like between the old rock and the hard place. And Holland just continues to fly. Another first down, this time right outside of the 24. Already in field goal range. Keeping it on the ground, Houston made a miss in the backfield. Hangs on to it and got about eight down to the 17. So a surprise after all those passes the last couple of series. Great call by Dan Hammersmith, the tight end. Uh, excuse me, the offensive uh, coordinator who has done a heck of a job changing things up in the second half. The adjustments that he and his offensive coaching staff has made are phenomenal. And, and really, they just started spreading the field and firing it, doing what they do best. Colorado State has never led. And now a timeout is going to be called. Colorado had Colorado. Called. They had 12 men on the field. You can get away with it. Not a bad idea the way Holland's throwing the football right now. LR Polaris, AVP, player of the game for Colorado. Bobby Purify close to 200 yards on the ground. Well, he's done it all. He's run inside. He's bounced it outside. He's shown the speed. He's shown the ability to punish people and finish runs. Very, very fine football player. But look, at, you can see in a lot of these runs, his offensive line did such a job. He was uncontested. And, and if running back makes his first cut past the line of scrimmage, and sometimes five yards past the line of scrimmage, a guy as talented as him is going to rack up big yards. And that's a tribute to the offensive line. Another guy, the candidate player of the game, right here. Man, is this kid, he's got it. He's got what it takes. He had a huge turnover, interception touchdown. It didn't phase him. He's come back and he's gunned his team right back into this football game. This kid has got the makeup to play this game successfully at the quarterback position. So now after the timeout, second and short after the eight yard run by Marcus Houston. So to the second start for Holland. Dave has mentioned that. The junior from Lakewood, Colorado. He's had battles with Platt before. In high school, of course. Little bunch right here. Short side of the field. Single is Anderson on the wide side, isolated, man on man. Stays near side though. What a grab by Treason. He's got the first down and he stops the clock at the 12 with 58 seconds to play. It's got to come down to this type of situation in this rivalry. This has turned into just one heck of a matchup between these two schools. And that is another seed thrown by Holland. I mean, it had to be Burrow was there. He threw a 95 mile an hour fastball on the black. I mean, that thing was pinpoint accuracy with some velocity. Three point lead. Precarious for Colorado. First and 10, Colorado State of the 12. They back off the blitz. Houston, nothing. Dropped now. Do they stop the clock and use their final timeout? I believe they will. Yep. They can still get a first down inside the two. They're well within Babcock range, of course, to just tie it and try to get it to overtime. And, and what's being talked about a little bit right now is ball security. You know, they want to win this football game, but you want to be smart about doing it. You've got to make sure if you're a running back, wrap the ball up with two hands, or if you're a quarterback, have ball security in the pocket. You know, they don't that blindside hit that he took the last time they were in the red zone. It was an incompletion. Could have easily have been an interception if that happens again. You have to worry about those kind of things or make sure you address them as well as calling the play that you think might win you the football game. On the flip side of it, Colorado, and Coach Hankwitz is saying, takeaway guys, one guy stack them up, every second guy in, go for the football. All right, punch it out, scrape it any way you can because Colorado State is out of timeouts. Buffaloes, they've only got one. So even if they get it back and Colorado State ties it up or takes the lead, it's going to be difficult for the Buffaloes to do a thing. And in the red zone, as we said a few times tonight, it compresses. I mean, the holes are a lot smaller for Holland, but boy, the way he throws it, Joel, he doesn't need much of an opening, much of a hole. You see why this kid set all the records in the high school ranks in the state of Colorado. He is special. He's got a second and nine. There's 49 seconds to play at the 11. Plays off of Houston on the play action. Buying some time on the edge. Nothing available. And wisely runs out of bounds to stop the clock. That was a heads up play. It sure was. Took only seven seconds off the clock. 
And again, don't force it. Colorado reacted defensively. They took away all your options down the field. Don't take a chance on turning the ball over. He didn't cost his team any field position. They're still in field goal range. That's a very, very smart play right there. Now, the last time he faced Joel Klatt, Justin Holland got the game winner in the final minute of play. It was back in 99. Holland's Bear Creek High School team beat Platt's Pomona Panthers as Holland threw a 30-yard touchdown pass with less than a minute to play, and the safety was trying to tip the ball. It was Joel Platt. Just over his fingertips. Here we go. Third down and about 10. Can he square up and get it there? Oh. Grab at the goal line. First and goal. Anderson does it again. Boy, is he a tough competitor? I'll tell you what. Every contested catch, Anderson says, the ball is mine. They are, they're just stunned here. Clock stops because they move the chains on a first down. The clock stops. Quarterback sneak, or do you go up and over with Houston? Sneak on a hard, quick count. And he'll spike it to stop it with 30 seconds left. You surprised? Yeah, a little bit. I would have just tried to sneak. A little bit. No timeouts. Not oh, even a silent count. That, that hurt him. No timeouts, boy. Not having a timeout. So they need just a few inches. As you can see, inches away from their first lead of the game are Cooper Tires, defensive player of the game. The quarterback, Robert Herbert. Well, they, they, he played as advertised. They thought they had something special in him, and he stepped up and made a bunch of plays. Will it go to Houston? Yes, can he get there? Spinning outside. No. no. Now, they've got to hustle back yes, into position. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. This is more than just a hurry up. This is survival. You know, do you spike it again to stop the clock and, and make it a four well, down? you can't run it because if you don't get it in, you lose the game. You've got to go up in the air because you've got to get your field goal unit out there. Wow. Third and goal, the toss sweep. Houston. No. He won't get checked that. He won't get there. It's Walker instead, and the game is over. Wow. Walker came in for Houston. They didn't go for the field goal in overtime. Amazing defensive goal line stand, and what a play by J.J. Billingsley. The injury to that knee, not a factor as the adrenaline's rushing, and he makes a huge defensive play. I might have thought about spiking it to stop the clock and at least have a coaching decision call that play on fourth down. They were, they were in disarray as they got to the line of scrimmage on that third down play. What a sequence. And Colorado comes up with the goal line stand, and look at the hit by J.J. Billingsley. Yeah, Walker couldn't do a thing about it. He had just come into the game for Marcus Houston. Boy. What a gamble, though. I'm surprised they didn't at least try to get up in a hurry, throw the football, because incomplete, you tie it and go to overtime. Yeah, that's true. I, I you know, or, or if they spiked it on second down, I might have thought about, or first down, I might have thought about spiking on third and have plenty of time to come to the sideline and decide what's my best play to call in this situation. We've game planned all week. What is my best goal line short yardage play? And let's run it. And I think in hindsight, you know, it's always 2020. These things are always easy to do after the fact. It seemed like Holland had multiple plays in his head called in his, uh, that they talked about in the sideline because everybody went right to the play. So the celebration begins in Boulder, Colorado. Good evening. This is your Rocky Mountain Sports Report. The Rocky Mountain Sports Report is presented by your Colorado Chevy dealer. Well, for the third straight year, the Rocky Mountain Showdown comes down to the final play. Colorado a winner tonight at Folsom 27-24. Postgame coverage begins right now. Tim Ring, David Diaz, and Fonte. And David, you know, credit to Colorado, but I don't think there's any way you can argue a colossal mismanagement of the clock at the end of the game for Colorado State. Boy, clock management, a critical issue. They fought so hard to get back into that football game. Marcus Houston comes up short. 
They come up, and instead of spiking the ball, they toss the ball again. Well, here's Marcus Houston fighting, trying to get in the end zone. Still 25 left, right? Still 25 here. seconds left. He's taking time. You think they're going to get up to spike it to try and tie the game up, stop the clock, kick the field goal? Instead, Justin Holland comes up to the line of scrimmage, tries to get a play coming as clock, the time is ticking away. Ten seconds now. He still doesn't have the play call. You got to snap it at this point. You got to get your guys set. You got to snap the ball. Either throw the fade and go for the score. <laughs> Or spike the ball, stop the clock, kick the field goal. Your team has fought so hard to get back in this thing in the second half. It's it's just tragic not to get an opportunity to tie the game or at least go for the end zone with a fade route to stop the clock. Miscommunication, indecision, it appeared at the end there for Colorado State. You either got to get to the ball to the line of scrimmage, hike it and throw it, or you've got to take your time and snap it and then kick the field goal. Well, lots more to talk about as we commence postgame coverage here on the Rocky Mountain Sports Report. We begin with our team, Dave Benz, live at Folsom Field. Hey, thanks a lot, Tim. Take a look at the scene right now at Folsom Field. Exuberant fans for the Colorado Buffaloes after an unbelievable finish. They have reason to be excited as the Buffaloes win it 27 to 24. And, and Tim, you really talked about it with DDI, the mismanagement of the clock by CSU at the end of the game. Right now, I want to bring in Jay Lewinberg, former Colorado center, Kevin McDougal, former CSU running back. And guys, they already talked about it at the end a little bit. DDI saying maybe they should have spiked it and gone ahead and kicked the field goal and go to overtime. But at least if you're going to go for the win, spike it and then regroup and say, hey, are we going for the win? Are we going for overtime? Yeah, I mean, th that just baffles me right there. I know the offensive coordinator. That's very unlike him. I mean, you get your kids in a position like that, settle them down, spike the ball, fourth and one. Either you talk it over, say, hey, let's go, go into OT, kick the field goal, or let's go for the win. I just don't understand that. Well, the only thing I can think of is because it's Holland's first start and you don't want to put it, it's never the kid's responsibility, but it's one of those scenarios that you just don't have time to practice all the time. So I, I, you got to wonder if he says, I'm going to make a play, I'm going to try to do this on my own, but it, it, it didn't work. No, it definitely did not work, but you know, what a ball game though. I mean, <laughs> the finish, whether whether Tristan Walker got in at the end or, or not, uh, this may have been more exciting than last year's shootout at Invesco. I, I think it was. I'll tell you what, because you didn't know what to expect this year. And then to have Anderson come out and have a huge game, yeah. have Purify come out, you had some great individual efforts. And, you know, anybody that says this isn't a rivalry is sadly mistaken. This is a great football game. And, and what a way to kick off both seasons. I mean, to come into a, a game like this, take it down to the wire, and this is only the first game. I mean, they got they, these. Both these teams have a long season ahead, but what a way to start it off! Well, we've got lots of post-game reaction for you, and we're going to begin it right now by going down to the field to a jubilant Gary Barnett. Talk about that offense, Bobby Purify was gassed, but it was a lot of yards. Well worth it. Well, he, he's a great player, and we'll learn a lot from this game. We really will. But you know, this is—I uh, <laughs> don't know how we won it, but we hung in there. After everything that's gone on in the offseason, it's finally back to normal. Your thoughts about putting everything in perspective, now you're playing football, this is what you think about. Well, it is. I hope this isn't normal. Congratulations, <laughs> Gary, and the big... Uh, Gary Barnett, obviously happy, guys. And, you know, you, you had said up in the press box while we watching the game, hey, if he loses this game, uh, maybe his job's in jeopardy, and he's got to feel a little bit of weight off of his shoulders right now after that offseason and finally coming out with a win. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's always a big game against an in-state rival, but particular after this team and their offseason and everything they've been through, you know, I think that he's just got to be so relieved. And finally, to win an opener and win against Sonny and, and CSU, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, I got to hand it to CU. They played a pretty good total four quarters. They let CSU back in the second half, but they kept after them, and they played a pretty good game for a first game out. Yeah, and, and they survived the mistakes that really could have cost them. There was a mistake uh, earlier in the in the second half where they had an interception. It was taken away due to the uh, personal foul, and then Marcus Houston gets a touchdown. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Plenty more post game as well. Uh, 27 to 24, your final. See you over CSU here at Folsom Field. Uh, we're going to be back to Folsom Field for more reaction in just a bit. But for now, let's head back to downtown Denver and Tim Ring in our Rocky Mountain studios. Tim.
All right, Dave, hang tight once again. Tim Ring, David Diaz, and Fonte. Uh, I am eager to hear what Sonny Lubick and, more importantly, Justin Holland were thinking there in that last 25 seconds. We're going to move on to Colorado, but, yeah, you know, reflecting on it, Houston, we were talking as, as the guys were talking out there. Right now, actually, we have Sonny Lubick live right now at Folsom Field. Let's go there. It's going to be great to have. Yeah, yeah. Anderson, and Purify, Holland, Holland and Clap. Stand by, they're coming back to us again? All right, wait a second. We had Sonny Lubick. Let's go back again. Keep the button straight. Stiff, what was that? Justin Holland's performance. I thought was overall. great. I thought it was good. I thought he did a heck of a job. He proved he can pass the football. David Anderson, great. all of our receivers caught the ball well. Little Damon Martin goes. Damon Martin goes in there and catches a 55-yard catch that nobody else would have caught. Uh, yeah, Justin threw the ball well. He he got heated up there. Maybe maybe could have thrown a little bit more earlier in the game, but that's. Uh, that's fine. We had to establish, try to establish some type of a run. Yeah, but I was proud of Justin. Defensively, have, obviously, we, you guys did a, a lot better job in the second half. We but did. Against yeah, the we're run, down though. 14. Yeah, we had. Yeah, they had trouble. They got a good big offensive line, and we got two redshirt freshmen starting for us in there. And in the defense, there are no excuses. Those kids played hard. Hell, I I walked it out of here with my head up high. You know, they, you know that's it. That's all I can say. I, I have. There's nothing. There's no fan that ever went to Colorado State was. Embarrassed about this football team, the way they played tonight. Everything going against us. Everything, going the home field, going this, doing that. Everything, and these kids come down, don't know any better. Just go play football. Tristan yeah. hadn't played the whole game, whole second half. What? what well, was, we what thought was he was a bulk. You know, maybe his bulk. He could, if he had to take on a DB or linebacker there, that he could maybe have a little more strength and knock it through for a yard if he got met at the line of scrimmage. How much harder was it to tell him the spike since you're in this place? Yeah, you couldn't. We, you know, we were out there. It was just, it's on us too, coaches. But you get him over there, and the clock's ticking. I don't even know what the heck happened to play before, but he did spike it one time. I guess he he went up to the line of scrimmage with ten. If he would have spiked it, I don't even know what the down and this. I think we had probably at least two plays down there. And I guess they'll second guess me for kicking the field goal. Hard to kick a field goal when you're on a one yard line, with the game on the line, a chance, and hostile environment, and everything. But yeah, we we just didn't get it into him and. You know, you, so you certainly know there's nothing on the quarterback on this deal. It was all, if it's on anything, it's on me. Sonny Lubick taking the blame for the chaotic final seconds that may have cost Colorado State a chance at winning the game, certainly cost them a chance to tie the game. You have to think Babcock's going to make an extra point to send the game into overtime. Houston was tackled with 25 seconds left. Holland had time to get to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball, and throw a pass into the end zone, or he could take his time, spike it, and kick the field goal. The one thing they didn't have time to do was to take a long time to snap it and then run it, and they did exactly that. Yeah, it took way too much to get the play call, to get orchestrated at the line of scrimmage maybe a little bit inexperienced on Justin Holland's part but certainly I, they had enough time to spike the ball come out kick the field goal play for the tie give your team a chance to win in overtime I think momentum was on their side in case you missed it at the beginning of that press conference Sunday Lubick did say the coaching staff was trying to get Holland to spike the ball it didn't happen now let's talk about Colorado you know what a lot of inexperience coming into this game no receivers had caught a ball save one but Bobby purify you forget this guy was here I think uh, he was on the 84 Buffaloes you remember, <laughs> remember purify the big game against Nebraska in the 62 uh, point game back in 2001 he showed why uh, he was a valuable part of Barnett's offense here tonight. Well, we talked about the CU Buffs having to uh, redefine their football team, and that means running the football. It's Bobby Purify. Looked like the Denver Broncos right there, a wham play right up the middle, taking advantage of the aggressive nature of the CSU's defense early on, set the tempo. Then it's third and one. Bobby Purify, left side, cut back run, taking it all the way to the house for a 25 yard gain, sets up their first touchdown of the game. And then again, it's uh, Purify up the left side, breaking tackles. Good, uh, set him up for their 14 nothing lead. And as Bobby Purify again, power to the left side, pull the guard, lead with the tailback again. A big gain upside right there. Bobby Purify, you saw the running game that they took from the Denver Broncos, and it really, really paid off for the CU Buffs. Uh, running a lot of the same plays, different formations, different personnel packages. And they really created the identity of the CU Buffs. Joel Clapp benefited from it, and Bobby Purify did a great job for them being physical at the point of attack. Basic hard-nosed football in the end, but the means to the end, a lot of formations, a lot of changing players, trying to confuse a new 
Colorado State defense with eight new starters, and I think CU uh, succeeded there. 189 yards, an average of over 7.3 a carry for Bobby Purify. Marcus Houston, conversely, 44 yards on 20 carries, 2.2 yards per carry. Colorado State made a game. Justin Holland in the offense had a chance in the end. More postgame coverage on the way. Your Rocky Mountain Sports Report is brought to you by Nextel. How business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. September 4th, 2004, perhaps one of the best Rocky Mountain showdowns of all time. 27-24, Colorado over Colorado State. That is a live look at the frenzy at Folsom Field. So, Colorado defeats Colorado State. Sonny Lubick now 3-7 and seven all time versus Colorado. Uh, Sonny after the game, in case you missed it, said this one is on me. Talking about the final frenzied seconds there of the football game. Right now, somewhere in a sea of humanity is our own Keith Plyer. This series has produced some great games, but this one is about as dramatic as they come. Uh, yeah, for sure. We, there's ups and downs all game, and it was the most exciting game I've ever been involved with. I know this team kept saying all week you were at the boiling point. That last play must have taken you to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For sure, I mean, that was, that was the biggest play I've ever seen. The performance out of this team when it meant so much to you to get off on the right foot. What do you want to say about your teammates, especially defensively? I'm just proud of how we stayed in this game. We stayed poised, and we were determined to win. And, and we came through with the victory, and I'm just unbelievably happy right now. All right, Joe Klopp is safe. Thank you very much. On the field to the locker room, let's listen in live now to CSU quarterback Justin Holland. And I'm proud of my effort. Uh, <sighs> we don't have anything to be ashamed of. Put it that way. Justin, speaking honestly, after the first 10 minutes of this game, it looked like it was going to be a CU route. So the, the comeback that you mounted more than once has to at least create some confidence. Um, you know, that's what we're about, you know. We, ne we never let ourselves go. We never... We never consider ourselves out of a game. We teach fighting here. That's all we do. With us. You know, when we were down 14 nothing, 17 nothing, whatever it was, there was nobody on the sideline with their head on the ground except for maybe the young freshmen who don't know what CSU football is about yet. But they'll learn, and they know we don't give up. Coach Lubick says he'll put what happened at the end of the game on his shoulders completely. You agree? No, I disagree. Uh, you know, this is this is a team loss. We were well prepared. Coach Lubick, you know, has every bit to be proud of this game as, as we do. Um, you know, we just got to start better. Uh, and you know that the end of the game, you know, may not, it may not even came down to that. When that just final in play the was stopped, can you describe shot. what was going through your uh, your head when that final play stopped? Uh, to tell you the truth, it was just disbelief. You know, I didn't even know it was fourth down. And then I saw I saw him rushing out onto the field and kind of hit me real hard. To be able to come back so well and to come up one yard short, how does that leave you? <laughs> With a terrible feeling in my mouth. Uh, it was you know, it was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my whole life. It was a game that I wanted really bad. A lot of guys did. And, you know, just that far. An emotional Justin Holland. Justin, the, the uh, receivers, uh, David Anderson, the, t the two freshmen, and what Joel Dreesen did for you. I mean, um, I know you're thinking about that last play, but the, the rally that you staged, how much of it was the receivers? I mean, yeah, you guys were watching. I mean, they were making great catches all over the place. I mean, I was getting this couple of these guys lit up. And they just kept coming down with the balls. I mean, that's everybody was refusing to lose out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this both teams didn't deserve to lose. You know, both teams played great. Yep. It was a great game. But, you know, speaking for everybody on this team, nobody gave up. Everybody kept fighting, especially the receivers. You know, they they wouldn't they wouldn't let themselves drop a ball. And you know, it was it was amazing to see they were carrying me on their back. 
And the way the defense stepped up in the second half was amazing, especially after their start. Justin Holland, thank you very much. All right, an emotional Justin Holland there, the Colorado State quarterback. David, you, you know a kid that grows that grows up in Colorado and goes to play football at Colorado State. And let's be honest, there's always an inferiority complex. Would love nothing more than to go into Boulder and beat CU. I have to say, before we get to his numbers, uh, Justin is still a little confused about that last sequence. He thought it was fourth down there. We heard him saying that he didn't know it was fourth down until he saw the players rushing on the field. Well, no, it was third down. The players rushed on the field because the clock ran out. So still... There's confusion amongst the Colorado State offense. Yeah, certainly some confusion when it counted most at the end of the game. But Justin Holland shook off, shook off rust early on in the game, really hung in there, and really showed a gutsy performance. I mean, his first major start uh, this season, a big game, like you said, the in-state rivalry, and he rallies his team back. So, I mean, he, a gutsy, gutsy performance, and you could tell how much this loss hurts, and he will learn a very valuable lesson uh, on clock management, on hanging in there and leading his team back. Phenomenal job, and he's going to learn a lot from this game. 29 for 42, over 400 yards, a pair of touchdowns, and almost a game-winning drive to shock the Colorado Buffaloes uh, at Folsom Field in Boulder. You saw the one interception there. Our hats has to, has, have to also go off to that CU defense. Now, Billingsley, the key stop. Let's not forget, he stopped, okay, Colorado State on that last play, and also the interception by Iwu to give Colorado the margin of victory in the end. Yeah, big-time play. Iwu runs that interception back for a touchdown, the difference in the ball game, and Billingsley steps up. It's third and goal. No time left on the clock. That's a big-time play by a leader in their secondary, the most experienced guy back there, and he made a big-time play, and he's guy has been banged up, so hats off to him. All right, you're watching post-game coverage of the 2004 Rocky Mountain Showdown, won by Colorado 27-24. Bobby Purify, welcome back. 189 yards. More on the the CU offense after the timeout. 27-24, Colorado over Colorado State. CU back to the running game tonight, rushing for a total of 256 yards, holding Colorado State to only 44. Back out to Folsom Field, Sandy Williams with Colorado offensive lineman Brandon Dabdu. This is going to go a long way towards our season. I'm so happy and grateful. I'm so happy to be CSU. What about the way you got that I had a lot of guts. I'll give him credit for that, but we came out with the win, and I'm so happy and glad. What do you say about Bobby Purify? Unbelievable. Oh, he's an unbelievable back. The offensive line made holes that are absolutely unbelievable. That's Brandon Dabdu, also a former Fox Sports Net intern. Okay, obviously a pretty good football player as well. You offensive linemen all want to be TV guys, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, you know what, David? It looked like the way CU went down the field on their opening drive uh, to go up 7-0, eventually taking a 17-0 lead that we might be seeing a good old-fashioned blowout in the Rocky Mountain showdown like in years past, but that's not the case. Colorado State got big, back in it. How did they do it? It was CU penalties uh, allowing drives to keep going for CSU. The second quarter, CU's up 17-0 on third down. Down. Holland can't get the ball to Walker, but you know what? There's a penalty on the play. Keeps the drive alive. First down, CSU. The very next play, it's a big play. Holland to David Anderson, plus 28 yards. And then we have third down and eight. The pass is incomplete to Dustin Osborne, but to let you know, there's a penalty going on. And it leads to Matt Bart's uh, touchdown, makes it 17 to 7. They get a score before the half. Then you move to the third quarter. And it's Holland in the corner of the end zone. It looks like an interception by Crawford. But you know what? Nullified. Illegal hands to the face. And it leads to a touchdown by Marcus Houston. 17-14. And then backed up their own five-yard line. It's Holland to Damon Morton. Huge play it leads to. And it ends up to their field goal. And it ties the game at 17. Justin Holland has got himself an arm, my friend. Well, you know, we talked about it earlier. I was out there in practice. This kid can make every throw on the run. The one mistake he made was throwing against his body, crossing route to the tight end, and that's the one that Ewu returned that interception for a touchdown. First game in this uh, season, so key for both teams. Colorado now with nine bowl teams from 2003 remaining on their schedule. Colorado State, they only got USC and Minnesota up next. Back with more after this. We are back. How about the wing stop stop of the day? Got to take you to a baseball game. The Angels and the Indians. Where are they at? Municipal Stadium again. The Angels with wing stop this game. Big swing. 
think these guys really being bothered by those bugs now. You can see Troy Gloss. I think he's trying to pick one out of his ear. I think you're right. Yeah. Break out the big fans. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Going to call for a towel. I think. Got something in his eye. That, boy, look at that. They're worse tonight than they were last night. They are really getting attacked. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hope that didn't bug you. Uh, final numbers now from Colorado State, Colorado 2004. The first downs even. The rushing yards could be the story of your football game, although Colorado State through the air dominated Colorado about as much as CU dominated CSU on the ground. Penalty is a big story, as David alluded to earlier. David, you got 10 seconds. What are you going to take from this one? CU found their running game that's going to help them in the Big 12. CSU, Justin Holland, as good as he can be. All right, we're back with more post game after this. In 1998, the Rocky Mountain Showdown moved to downtown Denver. The six years, the game was played at Mile High and Invesco. Each team won three games. Tonight, they move it back to Boulder. And at Folsom Field, Colorado wins it 27-24. Gary Barnett, no doubt a happy coach, putting an offseason of turmoil behind him. Uh, first of all, I want to um, say that I really admire Sonny Lubick for that last series. I, he went for the win. Um, that was that was guts and uh, believing in his team and uh, you know I, I really admire his decisions down there to, to do it and uh, you know I, I hope I would have had the guts to do that and could have you know that was coaching without fear so I tip my hat to him I told him that several times so uh, that was a heck of an effort by their their players it was a great effort by a couple of our players on the last play to hang in there we had. Um, Probably like lots of coaches, we told our guys before they came it was going to take four quarters, 60 minutes, and we just needed to win by one point, and they exceeded my expectations. We won by three, but um, it was uh, you know it was a heck of a game, uh, up and down. I thought CSU did a great job of making some adjustments and finding some spots to take advantage of of our defense, and uh, uh, they did a nice job with that early on. We had a lot of momentum with our offense and we were able to pretty much control the ball and then we just sort of got flat. Um, you know, they did some things to cause that uh, and uh, we, uh, we uh, you know, I probably didn't make enough adjustments to, uh, uh, to get us back to where we had some momentum going and so it was obviously probably an exciting game for everybody else to watch. Uh, it was exciting for me. I enjoyed every minute of it, every second of it. And, um, you know, it, it was, um, we decided to kick the 55 yarder because Mason uh, is, um, you know, he's been kicking those regularly in practice. He had the wind. And uh, so I, I hesitated the first time I was going to do it. And, you know, I think Coach Hank was a little worried about possibly getting the ball on the 40 yard line. And so when they called timeout, it gave me a chance to rethink it. And our kids said, let Mason kick it. And, and they were right, so uh, we let him kick it, and he nailed it. And so that was a big kick. And of course, Ewu's touchdown was a big touchdown. So it's just, I'm sure it was an exciting game. It was an exciting game for our kids. All right, that's Gary Barnett at Folsom Field. You know, David, Gary mentioned that their game balls to go around tonight for Colorado certainly purify, but also Billingsley for the big stop, Ewu for the big interception, and Crosby for a kick that may have been good from 80 yards out. Colorado now we're looking forward. How big of a win was this for the Buffaloes, but how big of a loss for Colorado State? Begin with CU. Let's not forget about the offensive line deserving of a game ball also, but CU, huge win after this offseason, emotional victory. I can't imagine how this, what this means to these guys after what they've been through. Big time win. It's going to boost them big time. Also, CSU, boy, they need this win desperately. They face USC and Minnesota. They could end up 0-3 and still be a pretty good football team. Yeah, you know, USC now the number one team in the nation and Minnesota tonight looked looked <laughs> almost unbeatable in their opener. Uh, but for Colorado, back to what you were saying earlier, I think, you know, again, and, and we are we are pretty much impartial here. I didn't go to either school, but after what Colorado went through those kids now, Gary Burnett, that's a different art. That's a different argument, whatever you want to think there. But these kids, that, that's a great win for them after what they went through a huge. They deserve it. All right, there you go. Post game coverage continues. We're going to start it all over again in case you missed anything in the Rocky Mountain Showdown.